Thank you, my colleagues, for uh, your patience. And we're back from recess. And to the people of Guam, thank you for your patience also. We're back from recess, and we will continue on uh, with the Committee on General Government Operation, Appropriation, and Housing on Bill 282-35. We are still on page 134 on the Budget Act. Senator Kelly, we will continue with yours and just complete your uh, your amendment. And uh, we have a question from Senator Lee. Senator Lee, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And just a point of order on that amendment that Senator Kelly had introduced. Are we gonna vote for the authorization of funds and then for the amendment? Is that what we're doing? It's a two-step process? Uh, no, we'll be voting for everything one shot. Uh, the authorization is built within the same amendment, not unless uh, you wanted to break it down. Uh, the authorization will allow the, the, um, the other parts of the amendments to work. So it'll be okay, just one shot. Um, so perhaps Mr. Chair, I can ask a few questions that would help to clarify it uh, for, for me and perhaps for my colleagues. So I, I just wanna be clear that uh, the public understands it, that I understand the history of this money, right? So this was uh, right. money that we had passed in a bill uh, to appropriate money for FESPAC from the 1% of the arts funding, is that correct? So there's like a QC that's paid, um, and so they take 1% of that money and it has to be directed to the arts. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? Or uh, of course. Steve? Yes, so... Um, uh, no, it's, it's, it's supposed to... Uh, uh, oh, stand by, Senator sorry. Kelly. Steve, Thank if you me. can go ahead and comment, please. Steve? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. So I was just asking, Mr. Guerrero, um, the, the history of these funds, this is the 1% uh, for the arts, is that correct? And it was a, a QC, QC money that was directed towards FESPAC, the 200K that we're discussing in this amendment? The only thing I know about this $200,000 when I was approached about it, um, you got muted, uh, Steve. Unmute, please. Okay, I'm sorry. The only thing I know about this funding source of this two hundred thousand dollars, which was was what's brought to my attention, was it's it's utilizing the thirteenth annual FESPAC right. appropriation. I was told in this particular fund that there was approximately, I believe, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Of which, of which two hundred thousand dollars has been authorized by the board to be utilized by Kaha. Now, it is also my understanding that this two hundred thousand dollars is part of 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 a of a transfer that that comprises of four other agencies, right? And that there was an initially the initial transfers, I believe. Uh, amounted to about a hundred and ten thousand, hundred and ten thousand. Let me see. Yeah, the total amount was came up to about a hundred and ten thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars. That's that's the movement between four agencies, which included Kaha. Okay. Now, because of this two hundred thousand being also thrown into the mix, which is not part of the general the revenues that that's what's found within the bill, um, there were a couple of suggestions that were made to kind of like proper how to make this uh, happen. Right. And when, when the good Senator um, Ellen Marsh gave it to us, <clears throat> what it was is basically a, a, an authorization, and please correct me, Senator, if I'm wrong, Senator Marsh, was an authorization by by the um, FESPAC group, the, the um, the Kaha board. The council, yeah, okay, the board that allowed them to use the $200,000, which the senator is also using a portion of that, uh, I believe, to the amount of uh, $89,277 as part of this uh, movement of funds between the four agencies. Correct. Okay. So, uh, no, if I, if I could stop you there or, or or just add a point of information so we were very careful um this is supposed to be for art programs so mm -hmm. the two hundred thousand um, dollars we needed that stabilization 
for the federal matching. TAF, I mean, it may not come in. Even general fund, it may not came in. But we wanted them to have as much matching as possible from a very, very stable source and to have it fit within its um, larger mandate of being for mm -hmm. the arts. So the $200,000 stays there. And what we mm -hmm. did is um, we shifted the more unstable money, if you will, um, the general funds and uh, some of the TAF in very small amounts to the others. And, that, and that's great. That, that was what I was going to explain was that was the first okay. approach we were given. And then we came back and told him, I said, you know, just to less, lessen the confusion, we, we suggested to just maybe get the, get, have call, get the authority to utilize the FESPAC money and, and basically have no transfer done. And that the only transfer to be done between the four agencies was the 110,000, which would have made it a lot easier and clearer. But I understand where Kelly and Senator Marsh was coming from to wanting to secure the, the 200,000 in car for the match requirement. That, that we understood. So the way she explained it was kind of thorough, thorough. Yes, and it does match, it does make sense, it does balance. It's just that I, I believe by the time uh, the Senator did her explanation, it kind of like got everybody like, wow, you know, and, and that's why <laughs> as, um, Senator Nelson was saying it was an extremely long amendment, but it was kind of simple in a sense, if you kind of followed it, if you had it in front of you, it, it does match, it does balance. It's just the mechanism that was chosen was maybe a little bit more on the confusing side, but it, 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 does, it does all match up. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, Steve, I, I think I just want to clarify again for myself and for the public, we understand that we are in the middle of this pandemic. And so, you know, my gut feeling and desire is to want to take any penny that we can find and direct it towards public health agencies at this time, direct it towards mm -hmm. DPHSS. But in my understanding and my reading of this money, we cannot direct it to DPHSS because it needs, it's part of that 1% for the arts. Is that correct, Steve? I, I'm not too sure about the restriction of the 1%. I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rely on you know, Senator Kelly Marsh to help me on this. Um, if, if, if there is a restriction yes. on the use of those funds, then, then yes. But right now I won't attest to it because I'm not familiar with it. Yes, well, um, it, it, there's two parts to this. Uh, one um, is that by law, it is the 1% for the arts and then by contract, um, there's an agreement of exactly how it, it goes through these steps and processes. But the other was, and you know, I haven't thought about FESPAC in some ways since February really. And it only um, occurred to me yesterday that we actually had gone through the process of um, committing ourselves to the airline tickets. And so we had actually paid a deposit and, and obligated. Um, we, I don't have the exact amount before me, but I think it's about $140,000 are obligated um, through that deposit for the airline tickets in, um, yeah, just obligated or encumbered in that way. Okay, Senator Lee. That's 120 that's, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. That, that's the 120 that's in the that's existing in the account already. That's not this money that we're talking about, correct? So there's 350,000 as you talked about. 200,000 is what we're trying to provide. Yes. And then with the remaining 150,000, like I said, um, you know, and just trying to get myself back into understanding where we were at FESPAC when we left. And I even had to call the head of delegation to help me remember where we were at in things. We had paid the down payment um, for the tickets. I bought my own ticket. I'm in the same boat. Okay. <laughs> and, okay, thank and, you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Senator, that, that's helpful. So I'm just trying to demonstrate to the public that although, you know, even if we wanted to, it, it's challenging, it's difficult for us to direct these um, excess funds now um, to public health, um, because that was a huge thing when we passed this bill for the FESPAC money. And the reason why we did that is because it has to go towards the arts. 
And with that point being made, why is this full amount not going to Kaha? Why are we piecing it off and, and putting it into all these other different agencies and what sounds, what seems like, or what could be considered by others to be pet projects and kind of funneling the money there? If it's truly the 1% for the arts, why is it not going towards the arts? Yeah, so that's why we have it staying with the arts. The $200,000 absolutely stays with the, um, with the arts. And like I said, the, the other and funds, it takes the money and it gives it to DPHR and HRRA. And I am the biggest advocate for DPR. I've yes. been at every public hearing on the on the pool, but I'm yes. just trying to figure out how this all matches up. Yes, well, um, in, in the discussions, um, it was really about providing that stable set of funds and you know, as I mentioned, with the, the general fund and the TAF, um, we really don't know what's going to happen to them. And so, if and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to disrupt any other committee. Um, and like I said earlier, I tried to have all the agencies talk to all of them and um, just have it be as minimal of a patch as possible. And there's absolutely no guarantee that 16,000 will ever make it to HRA or 30,000 to DPR because uh, yeah, those, those their, their monies from there are small and um, yeah, and we don't know absolutely what's gonna happen to that money. So Mr. Chair, uh, with that explanation, I'm gonna have to object to this amendment because the money doesn't go directly to Kaha in my mind. It doesn't go, that 1% for the arts is not being um, strictly adhered to. We're taking it and we're giving it to Kaha, then we're turning around and we're having Kaha like putty it out to these other agencies and it's unclear on how it relates to the arts. That was my one question. And I would just like that answered before we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so to clarify again, it's um, it's the unstable general fund monies and the unstable TAF monies that are going to the others. And the board did um, think about all of this very seriously. It was not a light decision for them, uh, but, Sen but they did Sen support it. Right. Senator Kelly, let's make it very clear. The 200,000 is going to Kaha, yes or no? Yes. Okay, that's one that's done. It's going to the arts, the fast pack money, okay? So don't we don't need to hear anything else about it. Okay. Now yes. what you're asking for now is, you're asking in your amendment in Kaha's budget of the general fund and tourist attraction, that's where you're taking money to give to uh, your other agency, am I correct? Yes. Okay. So I think that clears it up. The 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 issue of the arts, the car money, the fast pack money of the arts is going to car. It's not going to anybody else. Um, car has agreed to on the general fund that they were appropriate and tourist attraction fund to be able to use, to give up some of their appropriation to assist their um, the other agencies such as Parks and Rec, Territory Band, and uh, HRA. Okay, I, I just want to make sure that's clear about that part. And that's how that's being worked out. Okay, um, does anybody else, uh, Senator Lee, did that pretty much kind of like answer your question that you were concerned with about the arts? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm just still going to have to register my objection to it because right. it's unclear. It doesn't, we're, we're giving it to Kaha, but again, Kaha is turning around and doling it out to these other agencies. Right, I, I understand where you come from, but it's not doling out the 200,000, but not, not a problem, I understand where you come from. Um, does anybody else like to speak to this motion, please? I'm looking for hands. Senator Therese, please. Mr. Chair, I'm still trying to open the amendment. Um, I can read page one, I think, but not the other pages. So if... Um, does it scroll for you when you scroll it? There's a, a large space, so it may look like it's one page unto itself, but it's actually continues. It's eight pages. Did you want me to put it in the WhatsApp? Um, well, if you could just tell me if page one is the uh, subsection 
E being amended from Title I? Um, uh, let me go to that one, sorry. Um, Page, the page one Senator Therese actually gives the, uh, the authorization to expend the amount of 200,000 from that first bank to call for a call. To okay. is, uh, is it on the drive, uh, OFB, can you just, is it on the drive? I put it on the chat, uh, Senator Therese. And I can't open that one. So I, I it's on the drive, Senator. and. Okay. Uh, Thank you. And it was also sent to your WhatsApp. Okay. I don't know why on my WhatsApp is only letting me open up one page. Okay, so hold on. Well, and it does look like one page, so I, um, it's kind of no, weirdly no, no laid problem, Senator Kelly. Does anybody, does anybody, anybody, any other colleague have a problem with opening it up? Well, yeah, Senator I, Therese, I, Senator, I Senator the, Paris. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Chair. I put it on the Zoom chat. So the one that, it's the eight pager. It's right. uh, underneath. Okay. Does the first page show that it's the amendment uh, to subsection E in Title I, correct? Yes. Okay. So I think I can talk on the bill, um, Mr. Chair. It's, Please. Uh, I totally understand what the author is trying to do, and I commend her for figuring out a way to do this. She wants to put funds for the arts that belongs with Kaha with Kaha. And uh, that part I, I very much agree with. And uh, if it needs to be used now instead of held off for uh, FESPAC, then it, it used, needs to be used now. And that was the original intent of the 1% um, for the arts money anyways. So that part I agree with. The next parts where and I know what she's doing and it, it makes sense. She's putting the TAF funding, she's sharing that to these other agencies and saying, uh, you bank on TAF that might not come in, but Kaha can't because Kaha has to meet federal matching requirements if, we're gonna, if they're going to function correctly. So I very much appreciate that. Um, however, for me and, and you know, um, I know this is tough, but I'm, I'm just, I, I agree with the first part. Let's put the arts money with Kaha, allow them to spend it if they need to, to federal match for the rest of their fiscal year. But um, I don't agree with increasing the budgets of um, HRA at this time. HRA has been waiting for Army Corps of Engineer to do a flood, a flood assessment of Hagatnya. And um, I've asked them this many times and they said that it's um, in the works now. So I just feel like all of the plans for Hagatnya are really contingent on this flood planning. That has to come first. And I've asked them this many times. So for me, I, I, I just don't wanna put any more money over there until we get this flood assessment. They said Army Corps is going to take care of that. So they don't need cash to do that at this point. I know they have other projects and they're all great, but uh, you know, at this time today, I just feel like while we're prioritizing, um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I would um, just not do that at this time to add more money into for expenditure over there. And um, the other one, DPR, I mean, maybe that, but I, again, so my, my, I guess I'm gonna, ask to amend this amendment by just um, deleting the other pages and just leaving page one. Okay, now I got all the pages here. Yeah, so I think that works. Uh, I mean, well, I, no, can... well, I need to keep page one and page, no, I would just uh, I would just leave page one, Mr. Chair, and delete the other pages that to rearrange all, all the TAF money and just uh, maybe we can do that afterward, you know, after, after this, bills passed and you really want to do that, we can try to do that. But uh, I don't know, for me, I just want to get that fest, that 1% uh, of arts money where it belongs, allow Kaha to do what it needs and then and then uh, contemplate the rest later, Mr. Chair. All right. But I, think, I thank the mover of this amendment and it, it's a very, um, very good idea. I, yeah, thank you. 
And um, right. just as a point of information, so um, I too am extremely invested in and uh, concerned with the, the flood feasibility study. And so you perhaps are aware, but there have been commitments of the Army Corps of Engineers to the governor and there have been meetings and phone calls and letters that commit to that um, at their soonest availability. Uh, it, it was planned to start this year, I believe. Now, um, you know, COVID uh, may be pushing it back, but um, there is that strong commitment. There has been continuous communications on this and it is, it is moving forward. They actually found a way to expedite it by updating the 1970s um, study rather than uh, starting from scratch. So I hope that alleviates that. And the commission is also in here without the commission um, getting any extra funding. They, they seriously don't have enough to pay for their electricity, even though they're not being charged rent where they are um, or Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is a, a part of what they're trying to do in, in outreach in this COVID time. So I just want to mention those as well. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, Madam Vice Speaker, please, uh, you're, you're up. You waved, I saw you wave, ma'am. Madam Vice Speaker, did you oh. want to speak on that? No, no, Mr. Chair, I already spoke on this amendment. Thank oh, I, okay, I apologize, thank you. Um, I'm looking for, are there any hands that would like to speak? I'm looking for hands. I think, okay, I, I don't see any hands. Uh, Senator Kelly, I'm, my only concern is that, it uh, well, there's a motion, if I'm correct, all right? Um, there's a motion that Senator Therese asked to amend this amendment to delete, I guess, from yep. page two yeah. to page eight. In, Am I correct? Oh, right. She, she, Stand well, by she Senator, Ke Senator, okay. Senator Kelly. I'm addressing Senator Therese. She made okay. a, a motion to amend. Um, uh, do you, do you, you, got, you got that written down so we can vote on that to amend it? <laughs> Senator Therese, you got it, you're, you're preparing the oh, amendment? No, I don't have that written down, so I'll just withdraw it if, if it requires writing, so never mind, I'll withdraw that motion. Yes, I just wanted to make sure that, so nobody would question if we have an amendment written. Uh, Senator, uh, well, you withdraw it. So, is there any objection to withdraw? There being none, I think we need to do a roll call for that objection. Okay. So, Joe, let's do the roll call that she withdrawing it, and we can all just agree to the withdrawal. No, Mr. Chair, Joe, I never, let's do it. I never submitted it. So, yeah. I think. We oh, okay. You never submitted it. Okay, then yeah. we we'll just right. we we'll just ignore it. Happened then, Senator Torres. You waved your hand, ma'am. I was just going to bring up that point, but I, I just want to briefly say that I rise in support of, of uh, this amendment by uh, Senator Kelly. He has been working very diligently with her agencies and, you know, in consultation with them, they know what's best for their needs. And also, when we think about the economic recovery of Guam, including tourism, this is a vital component of that. So we have to, we have to, we have to allow them to. Um, to do what they need to do, and and they decided what is important. So I support her, um, and the agencies. You know, culture is culture is critical also to the economic recovery of Guam and tourism recovery. So thank you, Senator Kelly, also for all you've done. All right, um, moving along, Senator Therese, you you have a point of a concern because you already spoke on the motion. Yes, Please. yes, I'm looking at the amendment now, and now I don't see what I thought was page one, the part that that allows use of the funds in Title I. Is that correct? I, I, let, me, let me send you, um, what, it's hopefully the correct one, because we, we worked on this uh, very, very closely with OFB and legal for like a week. Um, so there were many versions of it. So um, let me try to send you what's hopefully the correct, correct one. Yeah, if you could please send it to all of us. No, I just yes, make sure absolutely. OFB gets it. Send it to OFB because they, I don't know if they bifurcated it or, or it, it's, I'm, anyways, yeah. So I was trying to delete a page, but when I'm reading this new version now, that's not the page. So, so yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure we're all voting on the correct thing, Mr. Chair. That's uh Yes. Anybody else would like to speak that I've not spoken? I'm looking. I see no hands. So I'll, I'll make one. Uh, a couple of comments and then Senator 
Kelly, I, I don't know if you have a closing. Probably not. More asking for support. But stand by, Senator Kelly. Stand by. Um, I just want to make it very clear. As you read on the amendment, I understand the reservation that some of my colleagues may have about the HRRA. Number one, the funding that's going to be moved there is actually just to help them with supplies, to get a, to get a printer and stuff, administrative supplies. That was what was very stated. Okay, so the, the, the Army Corps of Engineers is not going to, Army Corps is not going to provide them that. It's to do the study, whatever study they need to do. And everything else is actually just to help them administratively. So with that and I, my office, Office of Finance and Budget did work with Senator Kelly and um, they didn't see anything wrong with this and um, we'll just move. Senator Kelly, do you have a, a short, real short closing, please? Um, it, 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 just that, real short, real uh, short, ma'am. I put it in WhatsApp. Um, yeah, we just worked real hard at it. We tried to um, work together. We tried to stay within our committee and not affect anyone else and just try to um, get ourselves so, like I said, we can keep the lights on and look for grants and, and build up partnerships and um, serve the community as best we can. So I just um, ask for your support in, in helping them be able to make those bare, uh, those bare uh, minimum needs and their federal matching grant. Thank you, Senator Kelly. Joe, let's do the roll call and let's move, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment proffered by Senator Mars Taitsunu on page 134, this is the eight page amendment, just so everyone is clear. Um, the eight page amendment. Chairman Sinogstein. Aye. Chairman Sinogstein, aye. Vice Chair Bridgell. Aye. Vice Chair Bridgell, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Okay. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munoz Barnes. Honga. Speaker Munoz Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Ahi. Senator Lee, nay. Senator Teresa Talahi. Honga. Okay. Senator Teresa Talahi, aye. Senator Pedro Talahi. Honga. Senator Pedro Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Taitano. Honga. Senator Marsh Taitano, aye. Senator Castro. Honga. Okay. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Again. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Again. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 14 I votes and one nay vote. Thank you, my colleagues. The motion passes. It will engross in the bill. Senator Kelly, do you have any more amendments? Please. I think you only have one more. And let's close, let's close the issue. Yes, I, I have one more. And um, I dispensed with the other one uh, just to, to be able to move along uh, more quickly here. So. Um, Shoot. I, I, um, sorry, because I used this time to get it um, organized, I thought, and yet it still is um, not where I uh, thought it was. Joe, can you make sure we have, have it uploaded in the Zoom, please, and make sure all the, uh, our colleagues here have a copy, Joe? Okay, so um, yes, this, one, this one has also gone through different um, transformations, so um, let me... Let me make sure the correct one is there. Okay, well, I guess this is the final version of it. Um, I am- Can you please read uh, out your, your, your amendment, please? Uh, okay, so um, it's showing up there. Yes. So in this um, trying to provide tools and flexibilities, uh, flexibility, 
Uh, this is a uh, line 23, page 134. A new section 32 is added to chapter 12, miscellaneous provisions to read. Section 32, Commission Ifino Tsumoro authorizations. A new subsection 881050 is added to chapter 88, Title V, Guam Code annotated to read as follows. Uh, oh, is hereby authorized to apply for and receive grants, charge fees for translation services and publication of products, which would of course go through the AAA process and to allow legislative consult to make any necessary corrections. So again, um, they just want to have every tool available to them. Um, they basically, I believe, have not a dollar for program support right now. So they just want to apply for every grant possible. And um, they, get, they get called on all the time by private entities, government entities, and individuals and groups to translate. Um, and they do have publications. So to try to be more self-supporting, uh, they're asking to be able to have the authority to develop a fee schedule that will go through the AAA process. All right. Does anybody like to speak to that uh, that amendment, please? I see no hand waved. Uh, that being said, uh, closing, please, real short. Thank you. I hope for your support. Sidious <laughs> Masi. Thank you, Joe. Let's do the roll call. Let's move on this one, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment by Senator Kelly Marsh Taitsimo. Chairman St. Augustine. Aye. Chairman St. Augustine, aye. Vice Chair Rigel. Aye. Vice Chair Rigel, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Okay. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Okay. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Okay. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Tuis Talahi. Again. Senator Tuis Talahi, aye. Senator Pido Talahi. Again, for favor. Senator Pido Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Taitano. Again. Senator Marsh Taitano, aye. Senator Castro. Again. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moyland. Aye. Senator Moyland, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Again. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Again. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Aye. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 aye votes. Thank you, my colleagues. Um, the amendment will be engrossed into the budget bill. Senator Kelly, that completes all your amendments. Thank you, Senator. We'll now move back to Senator Therese. You've got three amendments and they're, they're generally simple. They're quite yes, they are, Mr. Chair. And there, there's one more that I was contemplating, but if I could just ask OFB. Um, so were the new health insurance contract rates incorporated in th this budget? Uh, does, in other words, do the agencies have enough to meet their share of, of uh, employer, employee, employer's health insurance? And especially the retiree section of the bill, does that have enough to meet what's going to be necessary for FY21? Yes, uh, yes, Senator <clears throat> Therese, uh, the amount that's reflected in the bill is the amount that we received from the from Guam retirement at the time we put the bill together. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, it's my understanding that the contract has yet been consummated. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not too sure, but the, the amount that that is reflected in the bill is what is the amount that we receive from from Paula Blas at the Guam Retirement Fund. All right, but for the agencies, what is the anticipated increase in uh, health insurance costs for this year that's been incorporated? Uh, I would I would need to check to see what the difference is, Senator. I don't have that information right off, but I can get that for you. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, do you know that? No, my, my understanding, Steve, is that you made sure every warm body is funded, so that includes the benefits. Am I correct? I think that could answer that question. 
If the, yeah, if the question, yeah, if the question is, is, is the retirement costs for all the employees in Gulf Guam currently on board is covered? The answer is yes, because we funded all the warm positions, all warm bodies. Health insurance costs. Health insurance costs. Uh, we were told if, there may be an increase in health insurance during yeah. FY21. And so, yeah, wanted to know if we've incorporated that in here. Remember when the retirees uh, were getting cut off because there was not enough allocated for their health insurance, and I want to ensure that that's what whatever. What, yes, Senator. What what whatever was reflected in the, in the staffing pattern of the agencies is the is the uh, is the amount we use for health, life, and dental costs. Okay. And, yeah, and for the and for the retiree seed, it's based on what the retirement fund provided. You correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. Okay, so I hope those are the up-to-date numbers because yeah, we, we're expecting an increase, right? Uh, so we just want to make sure they're not going to get short. Like it happens quite often. So, all right. Um, maybe Moving we can along the amendments. Yes, clarification of that, Mr. Chair. Uh, otherwise our budget is short all over. Okay, so uh, one of the first amendments for this page again is um, it's labeled SB 282 TMT, Page 134. This would be mm -hmm. for line 23. Well, to add a new section. And this one is um, at the request of GVB to increase their the spending authority of the general manager. So this is already provided for in statute, section 9111 of, of Title 12. And so all we're doing is changing what's currently in statute at $1,000 limit to $24,999. This makes it uh, in conformance with the authorization given by the board of directors of GVB. And, um, and it's also consistent with, they, they, they have to pass a budget. So the general managers never authorized to spend anything that's not already approved by budget. And, um, and they also, want to remove any um, negative marks that they've been getting in their audits because uh, of this provision. And so uh, I think for everyone all around, uh, they agree this is, there's, there's not much risk of um, impropriety because of all the checks and balances that are currently in place with the board, with the CFO, and that this is a common authority given to other agencies as well. So, right. so it would be to amend, yeah, uh, strike out $1,000 in the current statute to the other number, 24999 and authorizing the, uh, the bureau, the general uh, manager, yeah, to, to sign purchase orders up to that amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, get, and obtain prior approval of the board, correct? That's the one emphasis. Right. There. So the statute already requires that, yeah, uh, pursuant to a current budget, which is approved right. by the board, and the board specifically approved this amount also. So that's their request. All right, does any, does any of my colleagues wish to speak on this? If I don't see a hand wave, we're, we're gonna move the vote. All right, uh, no hand, Mr. do you Chair, wanna close I don't, them? Oh, I don't uh, see an I don't amendment. See. Oh, you don't see the amendment, oh, man? Yeah, I don't think it's loaded up on the chat here. Joe, can you make sure that's loaded, please? Should be in the drive. It's been in the drive since this morning, though, or yesterday. Joe, can you load that in the Zoom chat, please? Um, could we, uh, Senator uh, Tulai, can you kindly just read the uh, page and the? Um... Yeah, it says the uh, SB two eighty two TMT page one thirty four uh, parentheses four. No, sorry, no, sorry, not the parentheses for it's um, it just says 134, no parentheses. Okay, thank you. Please, please bear with us. We got many 134s. Yes, I understand. <laughs> and Joe, can you make sure that uh, uh, parentheses two and three is, is also uploaded after you've done the uh, the one about the parentheses of any number. Yes, sir. Thank you.
Two and three are done already, Mr. Chair. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that it's on the yeah. Zoom. Next is four, yeah, please note four. Mm -hmm. So these have been in the drive, I think, since yesterday. Okay. Joe, you got it uploaded? Thank you. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. M Madam Vice, uh, do you see it now, ma'am? Yes, I, I'm I'm opening it. All right. All right, uh, as, as it's floating out there, um, the, the, are there any questions? Madam Vice, did you have any questions on that one, ma'am? Not at this time, Mr. Chair, thank you. All right, does anybody else have questions? I'm looking for hands, wave, waving, so I know. Other than that, Senator Therese, if you can please close on that one and then we can go to vote, please. No need to close, Mr. All right, thank you, Joe, let's do the roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, on the amendment by Senator Therese Tanahi. <laughs> on page 20, 134, line 23, regarding contracts and purchases, Chairman Sinogstein. Aye. Chairman Sinogstein, aye. Vice Chair Rigel. Aye. Vice Chair Rigel, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Okay. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munoz Barnes. Madam Speaker, are you still there? Madam Speaker. Why don't we go and skip her and then, then we'll come back to her at the end, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I, I, apologize. I apologize, sir. I was just uh, no problem. We on a... Yes, we're, we're we're on the amendment. Please, if you would vote. Uh, pass right now. All right. Thank you, Speaker. When your barns pass, Senator Lee. Again. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Teresa Lahi. Again. Senator Teresa Lahi, aye. Senator Pito Tanahi. Again. Senator Pito Tanahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titano. Again. Senator Marsh Titano, aye. Senator Castro. Again. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Again. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Aye. Senator Taitigui, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Speaker, if you could vote, please. Madam Speaker, your vote. Madam Speaker, can you hear us? Aye. Aye, okay. Joe? Thank you. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 eye votes. Thank you, my colleagues. It will be engrossed in the budget bill. Senator Therese, your next amendment is a parenthesis four. Am I correct? Yes, if they could please upload that one, Mr. Chair. And while we're waiting for that, okay, so I found the document that was uh, 
upload it to messages and communications, transmit it to the speaker on August 20 uh, from, I think, DOA regarding the health insurance contract. And it says that overall estimated FY 2021 annual premiums are $120.7 million, representing a potential estimated increase of 15.6 million from FY 20 estimated annual cost of 105.1 million driven by claims experienced in FY 2020. And, and because of the late date that this was transmitted, looks like August 20th, I just, that's why I'm asking whether these new estimates have been included in our, our budget for these agencies, because they're gonna to have to make the employer share of those premiums. All right, your amendment now, ma'am. Do, do you know the answer to that, Mr. Chair, or OFB? Sorry. No, no, but um, we can get to that after we complete all your amendments, so we can get that discussion going. But at least we get we'll get done with your, all your amendments, please. Okay. Yeah. So, is it loaded now? The number four. All right. Joe. Uh, pardon? Yes. I, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It was just loaded. All right. Thank you. So the, this amendment is uh, to carry over the lapses from FY20 for the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Same language we've been using in the others. This is of course, to give them some ad additional flexibility. All right, uh, are there any discussion required by my colleagues? I see no hands up. Madam Vice Speaker, do you need to ask any Question because I know you're having technical difficulties on coming in, but at least you're on the phone. Hearing none, you need to close on this one, Senator Therese. I don't no, think so. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, uh, Joe, let's do the roll call and let's vote on this amendment, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment by proffered by Senator Therese Tanahi on the carryover provision for public health, Chairman Sinogstein. Aye. Chairman Sinogstein, aye. Vice Chair Rajal. Aye. Vice Chair Rajal, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Ongen. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Ongen. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Ongen. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Therese Tedlahi. Ongen. Senator Therese Talahi, aye. Senator Pido Talahi. Again. Senator Pido Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Taitano. Again. Senator Marsh Taitano, aye. Senator Castro. Again. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Paris. Again. Senator Paris, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received five, 15 A, uh, I votes. <laughs> All right, thank you. The amendment, uh, my colleagues passed. It'll be engrossed into the budget bill. Senator Dries, you have two more. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, this one's labeled SB 282 TMT line 17, page 132. So this is that list of um, employees. One, one, 132 or one, we're still on 134, ma'am. I know. Well, the list ends on page 134. So we were adding it to the bottom. Oh. But, but oh, okay. I, I, I told them to change it because it should go in the beginning of the list, which is on page 132, item C. Those are the behavioral health and wellness, public health, GMH and, and those. So this is just to include contract, contact tracers and investigators under those who can be hired as unclassified because we're expecting public health to you know, uh, hire in and out for these purposes. So. Uh, we don't want them to have to go through that unclassified hiring protocols to, to and these positions will change depending on the, the demand. So I, 
So that's the amendment, just to add the words contact tracers and investigators to the list, uh, oh. in addition to nurses, doctors, licensed health professionals, and an ancillary health employees necessary for clinical purposes at the Department of Public Health Social Services. All right, thank you. Does anyone would like to discuss this? It's just to make sure we got all our people that are taking care of us out there. There being none, no hands movement. Sentries, do you, do you believe you need a closing? If not, we're gonna go no, to vote. No. No, thank you, my colleagues, and thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Joe, let's go to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair, on the amendment. I'll uh, proffer by Senator Therese Terlahi. Chairman St. Augustine. Aye. Chairman St. Augustine, aye. Vice Chair Rigel. Aye. Vice Chair Rigel, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Okay. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Again. Speaker Munoz Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Pass. Senator Lee, pass. Senator Tweez Tanahi. Again. Senator Tweez Tanahi, aye. Senator Pito Tanahi. Again. Senator Pito Tanahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titano. Again. Senator Marsh Titano, aye. Senator Castro. Ungen. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Ungen. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Ungen. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Ungen. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitagui. Ungen. Senator Taitsugui, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Again. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 aye votes. Uh, uh, thank you, um, my colleagues. Um, the motion uh, passes. Chair, I didn't yes. have an opportunity to vote on that last one. Oh, I, I apologize. Senator uh, Joe, you forgot um, she passed, remember? Um, Senator. Uh, my, my apologies, my apologies. Yeah, I believe uh, you called on the speaker twice. Yes, you're you're right. My my apologies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Senator <laughs> Lee. Again. <laughs> Senator <laughs> Lee, aye. Mr. Chair, my apologies. Um, the the amendment officially received 15 I votes. Thank you. All right, thank you, my colleagues. That that this amendment passed. It'll be engrossed into the budget bill. Senator Therese, I think you're down to one, or is it two more still? No, my next one's on page one. 36, so I'm, I'm done with page 134, except for that health insurance discussion, Mr. Chair, yeah. Thank okay, you. we'll keep that short and simple on that yeah. one. Steve, if you can please comment to that yeah. one, then we're gonna move to the other amendments, because 136 is until we get to 136, okay? So, uh, Steve, if maybe you can comment to that. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. You know, Senator uh, Therese, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, in the development of these uh, of these appropriations for for the uh, retirement health insurance for both the active and the re and the retiree, um, you know, negotiations were going on at the time we were putting the budget uh, the budget together. Um, I, I do believe that the that the, the meetings and sessions were completed. Um, I, I we weren't. Uh, provided, or I wasn't able to get any 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 adjusted numbers or any updated numbers other than what we had already extracting it from the documents we had, which was mainly the, the staffing pattern. So to answer your question, if it included the most recent updated rates, um, I won't say the rates, but the updated amount, I I I, I would have said at this point. All we all we had was basically what was in that staffing pattern. So the, you're you're right. There could be a, a difference in the in the final number, but I, I was we weren't on we were unable to, to to actually get that that figure to incorporate into the bill. Okay, so it sounds like you incorporated the FY 2020 number. I mean uh, amounts for health insurance costs. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So do you think that's a concern? The 15 million additional that they're estimating? I, I, I mean, it, 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 may, it may end up to be a, a concern um, uh, towards the end, 
But uh, as for now, like I said, the only information that was provided for us at the time we developed this was what, what, what was in, in those staffing patterns. All right, well, I, yeah, I'm concerned about that, Mr. Chair. I don't want us to run short on the amounts we have to pay for the health insurance because uh, we've seen that happen before. It, Take your head straight. But, um, Understood. Well, uh, might uh, be uh, here. Madam yeah. Speaker, your mic is on, thank you. Yes. Yes, senators. Okay. Maybe less than 15 million if if we take out the autonomous agencies. So, but we should be looking for we should be looking at a way to re, to resolve that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Thank all you, Thank you, right. Steve. Thank you. Um, we look, looking at the uh, amendments, um, folks. Um, Joe, who was next on the amendments that was submitted? I, I did. I did see Senator Sabina say that she got an amendment. But what, what's That's on the correct. list, That's Joe? Correct. Hers would be next, sir, Senator Sabino. Oh, Senator Sabino, please. Uh, and can you upload it, please, on the Zoom her amendment so we can all see it? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's actually one above uh, Senator Chalahi's amendment, and I don't know if they got sent again. Let me just double yes, check. Yes, we just resent it. Okay. All right, Is that the one you. with the continuing appropriation authorization, ma'am? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So uh, if I can read this amendment, it's on page please. 134. Thank you. To add a new section to chapter 12 to read, continuing appropriation authorization for the Department of Administration, notwithstanding any other provision of law, the unexpended balance of funds appropriated to the Department of Administration for fiscal year 2020 and prior shall not lapse and shall continue to be available until fully expended. The unexpended balance from prior appropriations shall be utilized to fund additional buyer positions for the general services agency that have been vacant uh, for prior fiscal years. So if I can explain a little bit about um, GSA. Is, um, GSA is really the procurement um, office for all the line agencies of Gulf Guam. Um, if I can, uh, actually about 46 agencies, in fact, and entities. Um, currently in their staffing pattern, they had 12 buyer positions. Um, as of those 12 buyer positions, um, five of them are vacant. And three, with the, three of them were not permanized uh, as limited term uh, employees. And so, you know, as everybody knows, procurement has been a source of uh, frustration for a lot of agencies as far as, uh, you know, getting the procurements done on time. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the, um, the needed resources and that's the, the personnel themselves. And I would like to, um, you know, dedicate whatever funding may be available uh, to, to hire more of these buyers um, and, you know, yeah, I think that's really critical if we're going to have a more functioning government. Um, All right. That's why I'm offering, offering this amendment. All right. Does anyone like... Issues. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone would like to speak to this? I'm looking. I don't see any hands. Senator Kelly, please. To do is Masi, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm just wondering, since this is pretty broad and there are a lot of entities within the um, the Department of Administration, um, if I'm understanding it correctly, and correct me if I, I'm I'm not. But um, so, are we talking about are we talking about the Department of just the Department of Administration within? The office administration. So we're just talking about the department, correct? Okay, yeah. So uh, general service agencies is a division within Department of, of Administration. And so in my, yeah, that's correct. It's it's one of the divisions, but a very important div division uh, and often overlooked. Um, and, you know, as you can see, they deal with all 46 entities of the government of Guam, only 12 buyers, five vacancies, three limited terms, um, you know that that's one of the reasons why we're probably not getting procurement done on time, and uh, we lose we lose out on the opportunities. Um, so I really want to shore up this particular division. Okay, and um, so thanks for making sure I was on the right track. And um, have you had discussions with them? Did they have anything? Um, I mean, I I support the intent, and I, I like that we're trying to problem solve here. Um, but did they have anything pending? that this might impede upon that you know of? As far as the Department of Education themselves? Yeah. Um, I haven't had recent uh, discussions, to be honest, but uh, I think that I did, oh, the most recent discussion probably was back in May um, with, with GSA. So 
Um, okay, yeah, and I, it didn't seem like there was anything large and um, pending that this might derail. Yeah, I can't confirm that at this time, but um, yeah, I just wanted to prioritize this um, very much, um, yeah, thinned out division of their, of their administration, department of administration. Okay, well, that gives me um, information to think on Sidious Masi, Mr. Chair. All right, does anyone who like to speak to this? Because Senator Torres, please, and then Senator Lee. Yeah, I, I just want to point out that right now we're, we're barely, we're barely going to be able to hold on to what we have. And if, in fact, DOA has priority needs, um, let them decide what they would, how they would do it. But to mandate a new position right now where we're just, you know, barely even uh, funding warm bodies, I think is not the right thing to do. And, and they didn't ask for it necessarily. So while it might be someone's priority or we don't know that that's truly DOA's priority. So I would object to this. All right, uh, Senator Lee, ma'am, you have a question or comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, while I, I agree that, you know, procurement is often kind of the, there's like a little speed bump that um, a lot of agencies are having to encounter every time they're trying to procure goods for their agencies. And then sometimes the linchpin is uh, at GSA. And, you know, obviously these, I think these buyer positions would be helpful for them. I agree with the retiring speaker that we need to have DOA come in and tell us what their, um, what their needs are, what their dire, dire needs are, because it's such a large agency that deals with all the other agencies of Guam. And yes, GSA is under that umbrella but I, I would prefer to give the um, DOA director a little bit more flexibility um, so that he can determine where this, if there is money, where it should go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Does anyone else would like to speak to this? Looking for hands. Senator Therese. Yes, I support the amendment. It's, it's not allocating this year's um, appropriation, it's allocating lapses. So if there are any lapses from FY20, which DOA might not have got at all except for this amendment, then it's going to say, uh, please, you know, help GSA. It's another one of those places that is maybe the, you know, high on the list of complaints from all the government agencies. But I, I feel like, you know, we, this would help them to prioritize and help them to um, succeed and not not simply fail uh, because of lack of funding. So hopefully the, there are lapses, but I'm not even optimistic about that. But I would I would give this a try. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, does anybody else want to like to speak? Looking for hands. I see no hands. Simple comment on my part, because I'll be last to speak. I did meet with um, GSA folks and they did ask for help and I've asked them to please communicate that with the director so they can allocate and find ways to find funding to hire their folks. So I do understand where Senator Sabina's uh, amendment may, may be able to assist them, but I'm, I, I also fall in line with previous speakers that said, I don't want to tell a director what, how, to, how, how they fund their branches and their office. Okay, so I'm just kind of, reserved on that right now. But I do want to help GSA. There's no doubt about that. They, even their building has got leaks and everything. They got some issues down there. And I, I think DOA needs to look at their parties because I don't, I don't want to uh, pick between, I need an accountant to process payroll and pay bills and whatever versus getting somebody to purchase something. And so far with personnel, you know, DOA is a big office. So um, that being done, Joe, if you can go ahead and uh, do the roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, on the amendment proffered by Senator Perez, Chairman St. Augustine. As Mr. Chair. Uh, oh, I was oh you, to wanted, you wanted to close, I apologize. Did you want to close, Senator Sabina? Uh, turn on your mic, please. You're, 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 you're muted right now. Yeah, so I, I asked, apologize, uh, if you want to close. Um, all right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I thank um, uh, my colleagues in advance for their support with, for this amendment. You know, as you, everyone knows, procurement issues have been um, 
you know, harming our, our government of Guam. It's been a source of, of, of issues. And, you know, and looking in my study of procurement, I find that, you know, really they lack the resources and one of them is the personnel. And, you know, with only seven buyers uh, for the whole government of Guam, that's 46 agencies. Um, that's critical. That's a critical level of, of employees that can handle the procurement. And, you know, this is something that's very needed at this time, especially with the CARES Act. You know, we just heard with the Attorney General's office, they need to spend, you know, huge sums of money in, in such a short amount of time. I think now's the time to really uh, prioritize the money uh, at this very critical point uh, with a very critical agency that, that often gets uh, criticized. And it's, you know, it's, they're doing all they can right now with the, the seven personnel that they have to process all the purchase orders, process all the contracting, uh, processing, um, you know, um, RFPs. You know, this is, this is something that we need to prioritize and, you know, respect and, and I think, you know, give them the resources so that our government can function. You know, every time, you know, we come to the, the legislature, there's always a, um, you know, issues about procurement. Why isn't, why isn't this procurement getting done? You know, it's all GSA's fault, right? It, you know, what's wrong with GSA? And if we look at GSA, we see there's only seven buyers. And now, you know, that's part of the issue. Part of the issue is the lack of personnel. And I think, especially at this critical time when we need to get the, the funds procured and, and spent, uh, you know, let's give them the resources. Uh, so I ask for uh, my colleagues support in this. Thank you. All right. Joe, if you can go and do the roll call, my, my vote still stands passed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chairman St. Augustine, passed. Vice Chair Rigel. Nay. Vice Chair Rajal, nay. Vice Chair Shelton. Ahi. Vice Chair Shelton, nay. Speaker Munya Barnes. Pass. Speaker Munya Barnes, pass. Senator Lee. Ahi. Senator Lee, nay. Senator Tweez Tanahi. Ungan. Senator Tweez Tanahi, aye. Senator Pido Tanahi. Ungan. Senator Pido Tanahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titano. Pass. Senator Marsh Titano, pass. Senator Castro. Ungan. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Ungan. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Ungan. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Ungan. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Nay. Senator Torres, nay. Senator Taitugui. Ungan. Senator Taitugui, aye. Chairman St. Augustine. Pass. One more pass. Chairman St. Augustine, pass. Speaker Munya Barnes. Pass. Speaker Munya Barnes, pass. Senator Marsh Titano. Um, ahi. Senator Marsh Titano, nay. Yes. Chairman Sinopstein. With reservations, nay. Chairman St. Augustine, nay. Speaker Munya Barnes. Again. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received nine A's and six, and I'm sorry, nine I's and six names. All right, thank you, my colleagues. The motion passes. Um, it'll be engrossed in the bill, the budget bill. Um, who's next, uh, Joe, on the amendments? So we can move along, please. Joe? Thank you, sir. Uh, we have no other amendments for 134. 
All right, my colleagues, we're moving along. We're on page 135, a minute, uh, chapter 13, administrative provisions. On page 135, uh, do we have, we don't, we don't have any hands up there. We are now on page 136, my colleagues. 136, there's no amendment on 136. Senator Therese, do you have an amendment for page 136, ma'am? Yes, I do. Um, so on, in the drive, it's labeled as SB 282, TMT, line one, page 136. And uh, this is very simple. So there, this um, section of the bill talks about government funded travel is prohibited. And then it makes a long list of exceptions. So one of the exceptions is to travel, subsection I, to travel to attend conferences and official meetings with national and regional government officials or national and regional organizations of which the entity is an official member. And I'm going to, my amendment is to add to that subsection, the words where attendance is necessary to advancing Guam's interests during fiscal year 2021 and as approved by governing board or director. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, does anyone like to speak to that? I, I, that sounds great. It's just to narrow anyone? down a little bit because uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we are very tight on our budget this year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. I, I don't see any hands to speak to it. Um, Senator Senator Kelly, you, you want to speak to that? And yes, well, I, I and, just then, have a, a and then you'd be followed by Senator Pito. Okay, I just have a question. So um, just for my understanding, um, and, and I agree, I mean, we're looking for, for ways to be responsible here. Um, so if there is no board or governing body, is it, is it um, implied that it's only as is applicable? It has to be. That's how I read it, yes. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. So, Sijuas yeah. Mahasi. Yeah, you gotta have a governing board or a director. If you don't have either one, then you, you, you're you on your own traveling. You just account for it. All right, Sen Senator Pito, do you have any comments you want? Because it, there's no restriction other than an issue of board. Joe, or uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I talked to you uh, regarding this one at the request of yes. the mayors. And all that they wanted to do, they're not gonna, they're not gonna spend any per diem money or any travel money, but they just wanted to take that ban uh, for traveling out of the bill. That's all that they want. They're not gonna do, use do, any per, do, uh, government government funds. Oh, I don't know if there's any any ban here in, in the budget bill for them to travel. I mean, they want to travel there on their own. So just don't use government money. I, I mean, don't, that, don't use... They just want to take the word ban out. I think that's in the mayor's section of the bill, Mr. Chair. In the mayor's section of the bill, I think it was it was specifically to certain funding that they can't use it for travel. As long as they understand that if there's a special section of special funds, ban. they should Mr. be able Chair, to work with that. All that they want is if the word ban, travel ban is, is, is on there, they just want it out. They're not asking for any funds. It's not, it's not Okay, I'll have uh, somebody look it up, but if you know the chapter we're at, uh, Senator Lee, please. Could you say that? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if we could um, just do that on the side and we can get back to yes. Senator Pino with his thing. So, uh, um, I just want yes. to make sure we're focusing on Senator Terlahi's amendment. Thank you. Yes. Does anybody like to speak on Senator Terlahi's amendment? I'm, uh, I don't see any hands. Um, Joe, let's call the roll. Uh, Senator Lee, do you need a, a closing? Okay, thank no. you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Joe, let, let, let's go to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair, on the amendment uh, proffered by Senator Teresa Lahi on travel. Chairman Sinoxtein. Aye. Chairman Sinoxtein, aye. Vice Chair Rajal. Aye. Vice Chair Rajal, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Again. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Ungen, papa boy. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Teresa Lahi. Ungen. Senator Teresa Lahi, aye. Senator Pido Talahi. Ungen. Senator Pido Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titan. Ungen. 
Senator Marsh, start to move. Aye. Senator Kostru. Fungen. Senator Kostru, aye. Senator Moreland. Aye. Senator Moreland, aye. Senator Munya. Fungen. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Fungen. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Paris. Fungen. Senator Paris, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 aye votes. Thank you. Uh, that amendment uh, passes and it'll be engrossed in the bill. Senators, I'm looking on, on 136. Do you have anything else? If not. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, colleagues. All right. And one, on page 136, is there anything else by our colleagues here? Nothing. We are now at one page 137. Folks, page 137. I see no hands. We are now moving to 138. There shouldn't be anything. One th you have something for 138, ma'am. Senator Sabina. Yeah, un unmute, please, so we can hear you. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's on the Zoom chat. It's one above uh, Senator Chalahis. It's a, it's a labeled SB282 SFP P138. So if I can just read it for now. Yes, please read it. Okay, so to add a new section to chapter 13, part to read, pursuant to section 5010 of chapter five, title five, Guam code annotated, agency shall submit to the general service agency a projected annual procurement plan at the start of each fiscal year. Plan shall include equipment, services, supplies, example vehicles, copiers, computers, heavy equipment, security, ground maintenance, janitorial, and construction supplies, food supplies, et cetera, by category together with appropriate specifications or scope of work. Okay, so this language actually comes from one of the circulars uh, that GSA puts out. And uh, so this section in the law is about planned procurement. In my discussions with GSA, I asked them, what are some ways we can improve procurement? And um, uh, one of the proposals or recommendations was to uh, have agencies uh, submit any planned procurement at the beginning of the fiscal year, uh, considering that now they know how much money they have um, appropriated to them, uh, that, uh, you know, to get basically to get the, you know, get the procurement started in, in the beginning of the year rather than uh, as, as it arises. So that's one thing is to help GSA, it, help, it would help GSA facilitate procurement so that these agencies can obtain the, the resources that they need in a timely manner and at the best cost possible. Uh, the other thing that this does, it can help GSA consolidate orders. And this is something that I would like to see with government at Guam is that they can combine orders to uh, conserve money uh, with shipping costs. So if you imagine uh, if one purchase order comes in from one agency for paper on one day, and then the next week, another order purchase order for the same item comes in the next day. Now we've increase the cost unnecessarily to government uh, due, due to the shipping costs alone. So it really, you know, it helps everybody all around. It helps uh, save money. Uh, it helps, to, yeah, helps to reduce the unnecessary cost in government. Um, it, it also helps to get the materials and supplies and, and contracts done on a timely manner without having to go to, to emergency procurement, which is what it is not intended for. Um, and to get the best cost for the goods that the government seeks and needs. So it's really just, uh, you know, one of the best practices um, and, it, and it is part of the law as well. And I think, you know, putting it up front and explicit in the budget bill, uh, I think it's, it's a good tandem to, um, at, uh, with the appropriations. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the, the rationale behind this amendment is to, right. to facilitate right. procurement and get the best pricing for Government and this is one of the low-hanging fruits. So, you know, at a time when you know money is, is very scarce, you know, it's tight, you know, we have to maximize our dollar. And this is one of the low-hanging fruit in which we can achieve this. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Senator Lee, I saw your hand wave. You wanted to speak on this amendment, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to thank the proffer of this amendment. I agree that um, if we're able to enforce this, that we'll be able to help streamline and potentially um, um, have savings down the line. But Mr. Chair, I just have a 
quick question for the proffer of the amendment, if she'll yield. Um, she mentioned that this was listed in GSA circular, so I just wanted to know if this was um, discussed or contemplated in the rules and regs, if this had a public hearing, um, if, a pub if this was ever discussed in a public hearing, and what happens um, to agencies should they not uh, comply? What happens to agencies should they not comply? And it also says at the start of each fiscal year. So, I mean, within 30 days, within, I mean, I don't know. There's just a lot of wiggle room here. But I, I appreciate this amendment. I think it's a, it's a good idea. And hopefully if, you know, it's in, if it's enforced, then it'll move forward. But it's just kind of very flexible, the language. So I'm just trying to figure out. Um, yeah, anyway, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, if, uh, there, there's uh, not a problem there. Uh, anybody else would like to speak to that? Senator Sabina, uh, you, you wanted to answer that? Yes, uh, yeah, that was a point of inquiry, I believe. So yeah, I just wanted to share with the, the public what this section is about. So it doesn't, it doesn't add to the law, it's actually just reinforcing the law. And uh, it's just best practices and just ensuring that the agencies are aware of this um, to kind of like consolidate their orders. It's not, it doesn't require any public hearing because it's already part of the law. So if I could just read the section of the law and it's not, uh, there's no, what do you call, there's no um, consequences other than them not doing it. There's no, that's why perhaps why it wasn't done. Uh, there wasn't any kind of enforcement attached to this particular part of the law. It's more a policy. It was a policy uh, in favor of planned procurement. So by just kind of reinforcing the, the law that's already in place, um, you know, making our, our agencies aware that this exists and that um, maybe at this time it's probably prudent to follow what the policy states in the procurement law. So the, right now there's no enforcement, no consequences uh, currently in the law. It's just basically a policy in favor of planned procurement. Um, but, you know, again, it's all about incentives. You know, we're incentivizing, um, it's, I, I believe it's more about incentives for our government to, to follow through with the laws that are in place uh, to get the best uh, maximum use of the dollars that we're appropriating, very, very precious dollars at this time. So um, I hope that answers the question. All right, thank you. Does anybody else like to speak to this? None. Senator Therese. Just very briefly, I just want to say, yes, I, I support this amendment. If if this is done, it it will save money, period. And we will not have that mad rush of uh, purchase orders that they want to get through at the end of the fiscal year. And GSA becomes overwhelmed and because they're trying to spend their money at the last minute. And, and every advantage that we can give to GSA to get better value for our money, I, I support that. Thank you to the sponsor of this amendment. All right, thank you. No one else to speak. Uh, I understand where Senator Sabina is coming from. We do that in the military. Proper planning prevents poor piss, poor piss execution of, of, of plans. All right, so why don't we go and just move on and, and let's uh, vote on this. Uh, Joe, let's call the roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment proffered by Senator Sabina Paris, Chairman Sanagstein. Aye. Chairman Sanagstein, aye. Vice Chair Rajal. Aye. Vice Chair Rajal, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Again. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Senator <laughs> Lee. Again. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Therese Talahi. Again. Senator Therese Talahi, aye. Senator Pido Talahi. Again. Senator Pido Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titan. Again. Senator Marsh Titanu, aye. Senator Castro. Again. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Again. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 aye votes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Meskian. We are now on page 138. Anyone else with an amendment for page 138? 
If not, we'll go is to the next page. Senator Paris, is, is that second one? I would Sorry. do that one because, yeah, I withdrew the other amendment because it's similar uh, enough. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Anyone else for anything on page 138? No, okay, page 139, page 139, page 140, page 140, anyone with any amendments for page 140? Nope. Page 141. Anything on page 141? Senator Terlahi? Yes, and if I could uh, get the assistance of O of B. So um, on page 141, section seven, it's fund reversions. And so it says, unless otherwise specified in this act, and then it lists, it says these funds shall revert and the last day of fiscal year 2021. So for example, the tourist attraction fund, if all unexpended or unencumbered appropriations made from the tourist attraction fund by a GG1 purchase order or contract pursuant to this act shall revert to the tourist attraction fund on the last day of fiscal year 2021. But because we included in this budget, um, what says unexpended or unencumbered appropriations, but we, um, I, you know, they're counting on any excess revenues above, remember that provision in the, uh, for GVB, where they're going to get 80% of any tourist attraction fund revenues above the, the current estimates in this, this budget bill. So I'm thinking we should remove that for the tourist attraction fund so that it does not revert and that they're able to, to continue to expend it. Uh, you're, you're, you're correct, Senator. If, if that's the wish of the body, you, you can do that. Um, right now, yeah, the only thing that is required of the appropriations as set forth in the law is any revenues that come in up to that level, uh, which have already been appropriated and allocated. Uh, the only thing that's required of that appropriation that it covers those expenditures and encumbrances by the end of the fiscal year. Wow. Okay. And be, and, um, Okay, and so for example, GVB, they have a set appropriation and, and we know how that will work. But for that, that appropriation that says they're going to receive 80% of any excess uh, TAF, or not excess, but any TAF revenues above the estimated level in this bill, they're gonna get that. Uh, if we remove subsection B, does that allow them to continue It, it allows them to continue to use that. Isn't that correct? Let, Beyond the last day of fiscal year 2021. Let, let, me, read, let me read the provision for a quick, quick Senator. Okay, and, and for my colleagues, the amendment is labeled SB 282 TMT line 14, page 141. And it's really to delete subsection B. I'm trying to confirm that this is uh, what I think it is. Senator Tulai, uh, let me see if I can answer your question. I think uh, in the case of like Jimmy and stuff like that, is anything above 
the projected revenues, that was where we were, uh, that's where that 80-20 uh, allocation would come in. But as far as anything uh, within the appropriation level, any, any excess, I mean, not any, I would say any lapses or unencumbered monies, that would be the one that will, be, will, that will carry over. Okay, because we because the language is that it um, it, it says eighty percent of all TAF revenue for fiscal year twenty twenty one exceeding the amount estimated in section two shall be appropriated. So the eighty percent is appropriated, um, but they might not be able to expand or encumber it by by the end of September twenty twenty one because of the way they're calculating it, right? They might not even be able to calculate that until after September 20, uh, September 30. That and, 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 that, and that's correct. And, and, and I guess that, that's where, the, uh, um, that, that's where the, the problem lies is that we won't know exactly what the balance is until the end of the fiscal year. Okay, so um, do you see any harm in removing subsection B? That's my amendment. Or do you think that's consistent with your intention when you appropriated 80% of the TAF revenues for FY21? Well, right now, Senator, the way I look at it, it, it doesn't conflict with what we did earlier with the 80-20. By, uh, by removing this, Unless they have carryover provision, where is it going to go if it doesn't revert back to the first attraction fund? So I'm thinking that, you know, unless um, they have the carryover provision that allows them to utilize those funds, everything else would go back, I would assume, would go back to the TAF. Um, so right. But I, I don't want that to happen. We wanted to stay with the agencies that we've out, uh, where we've appropriated that money for them. For example, Parks and Rec. That's they're getting, you know, they're relying on tourist attraction money. We're not gonna, we might not be able to account for it until or expend it. They're not going to be allowed to expend it. I'm pretty sure until it's late. So, all right. So I'm maybe I'm just going to go for it then with my amendment. It, it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to. Take a chance here. I think um, uh, to to remove subsection B, and the intent is that uh, all of those, so that their appropriations will stay with them and it will not revert. The the only thing, Senator, I just want to comment on that is is just to ensure that the provision to allow them to utilize those funds is is also provided to them. Otherwise, right. it, it it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't have no effect. Okay, so it's only for those where we've appropriated the money. And so we, we have appropriated the money. It's not for anything above what we've appropriated, right? No, no, no even, even if you're referring, because you gotta remember even the unexpended, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure that the provision of, I mean, there's a provision there that allows them to use that portion too. Right, that's what I'm trying to do by deleting subsection B. So instead of reverting the unexpended, they're continued to be authorized to expend it. Okay, I, I, yeah, I understand the intent. I, I, I think what, what we're doing is, is sufficient to cover it. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my can I can I have a, a question? Uh, ask a question. So as I'm reading it, and it's um, um, it's an area I'm not very familiar with. So, but when we're talking about the tourist attraction fund, so would that be everywhere it is, since it's spread out amongst a lot of entities? Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page as as what you were thinking. Anyone else on the amendment? Anyone else on the amendment? Senator Pito.
Senator Pito, you're recognized. Senator Pito, did you have something? I thought I saw you raise your hand. Where did he go? Sorry, Mr. Chair, I believe we may have uh, lost okay. Senator Pito in the connection. Okay. Um, I did have something I, I, I wanted to uh, make sure that I understand this amendment. So I think uh, Senator Terlahi is just trying to make sure that I understand what she's trying to, she's trying to I think I do. It's just to make sure that uh, um, lapses, this is basically for lapses for FY21, which is this current year. So it's just trying to make sure that these lapses stay with wherever the agency was at. But I'm um, not sure we can, I guess my question is for OFB, don't we generally do like carryover appropriations in the following year's budget where then we would allow those lapses to be available? So I think that's why they're, the mechanism here is it goes back to the TAF and then the following budget cycle, that's when the legislature can say the lapses from those agencies from the TAF uh, carry over. They continue, the appropriation continues. Steve, you're on mute. Yes, Senator, both, both uh, provisions, method of provisions have been done either in the current uh, budget year or the following budget year. So in other words, if you wanted to carry over FY 2020 appropriations, you would do it in 2021. Um, uh, that's normally how it's done because by then you'll kind of know what the amount is, how much balance is available. Therefore you go ahead and put the provision assuming there is money to be utilized. Uh, if you do it this year, uh, you know, saying that you want to carry over 2020, Again, you're just giving the authorization. We don't know exactly what amount we're talking about. So it's just kind of like just securing whatever monies become available or are available at the end of the fiscal year. So you are so, right. Yeah, what I'm getting at is, um, so in this budget bill that we have right now, do we have, we don't have anything in it that continues the appropriation of lapses for FY21 currently. In this budget, do we have any, did we pass any amendment or any provision that says that the 21, any lapses in the 21 will continue? That's exactly I what need to, I, do I, yeah, I, yes. I would need to I would need to verify that, Mr. Chairman, please. Give me a moment to verify. There have been quite a few amendments right now, so I need to verify that. Anything that, that I carry over is 2021, I think. I guess what I'm trying to say is can we do a carryover appropriation in the same fiscal for the same fiscal year? Like in the same budget for that year, say any lapses, just stay in it till next year. Because that's kind of like we're a appropriating for next year's budget that you see what i'm trying to say it's uh i i, um, I, I think i think uh before steve answers that i think we need to understand how that that portion of 141 is written at the end of fy 21 not this year but mm -hmm. next year everything reverts back to taf that's all it's doing is making sure it reverts back and it's put as whole then it'll be budgeted out again in the next budget. So to take it out, I, I couldn't support that. I would have to live with that revision because a reversion is because it just brings it back. And then we're gonna do what we're doing today, all on an expended be carry over. We can do that during the budget, but at by September 21, 2021 is when it happens. We will discuss the budget before that period. So it won't impact anybody. All right. So I I don't see a need to get rid of it. So I, I, I would object to that. But anyway, we can move along if anybody else needs to speak on that one. Yeah, that's that's what I was just trying to say. I was trying to get across it. I'm not sure if we're able to do this because it's like we're appropriating for the following fiscal year because a lapse is something that's not spent in that fiscal year. 
So can you appropriate something that's not spent in that fiscal year to the following fiscal year? Because that's in effect what this would do. Is that correct, Steve? Yes. That's correct. So then that's the question is, can we appropriate for, you know what I mean, a fiscal year that's not here yet? That's my concern. It might be um, inappropriate. Yes, Senator Rigel, if you're talking about appropriating 2021 revenues for the next fiscal year, like in 2022, I don't think the provision is, is doing that. All it's saying is that whatever available balances are left of the 2021 appropriation will be available in 2022. I am That is my interpretation of all these carryover provisions. Just like right now, we are talking about carrying over 2020 appropriations into yeah. 21. But we this are not, would, yeah, we're, this we're one not, would carry over 21 into 22. Yeah, what you're just, you're just, yeah, you're just authorizing. Yeah, you're, that's correct. You're already, you're just authorizing what's already appropriated to continue into 2022. You're not appropriating it. Correct. I'm just asking, can, are we allowed to carry over appropriations uh, to a future fiscal year? That's basically what the question is. Is that something uh, that we're allowed to do? I, I believe we're, we're doing it right now as we take 2020 and appropriating it into 21. So it's, it's been a practice. Uh, it's nothing new. Um, I, I would say uh, I haven't seen anything that would... Uh, think that it's otherwise that you couldn't do it but you know it's been a practice in the past okay so I, I i would think it's okay okay thank you right. thank you senator thank therese you. you waved your hand ma'am do you have something to say uh is anybody else going to need to speak senator clinton uh at the time no one else had anything else to to uh say so i was the last one talking all right senator uh senator therese please Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and, and so just um, if you look at Section 7, this is something we are physically putting in this bill. We're saying if it's not an, if it's not expended or encumbered, it will revert. If we didn't put this whole section in this bill, then that's exactly, um, then it would not revert. Then the you know, logic says that it, they would be able to continue to expend it, that those uh, uh, appropriations wouldn't end. So what I'm trying to say is, for part, in particular for the tourist attraction fund, because of the language that's also in this bill under GVB, that says we're going to appropriate revenue exceeding the amount estimated in this act is appropriated to GVB, we know that the determination of all of that is not going to be made. It might be made throughout the year, but it won't. Uh, but some of it will have to be made after September. And so we want GVB. If we're if we're being you know straightforward with what we're trying to give them in the earlier section of the bill, then we need to allow that to just take you know take its course, its full course, so that after September, whatever comes in in September, that's over and above that they also are able to expend that. Because if they try to do a purchase order, you know, in September, it's not gonna work. So that's all, that's what we're trying to do. Just make it consistent that if we're, we're telling them to rely on uh, exceeding estimates and appropriating that to them. So this this helps that to work. It, so they go together and um, otherwise it reverts and they're not going to get any anywhere near what this bill seems to promise them. So that's my intention here. And especially for that, that one fund, because you know, some of these smaller agencies are relying on TAF, excess, excess revenues, right? Over and above the 400,000 uh, visitors. And uh, so this is, I'm trying to do this to make sure that they can get some of that money for real. Yeah, or, other, I, I guess that yeah. was your closing. Steve, you wanted to comment to that? Yeah, just just to maybe just add some information is that you know just bear in mind that when we make appropriations, the appropriation is is good for a 12 month period, normally the fiscal year. So we're 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 appropriating money for the agencies to operate for a 12 month period. 
And we're assuming that the end of the 12 months, if they have not exhausted what is being appropriated, it's normally the thought that these monies will revert back to the fund source it was appropriated from. Unless specific uh, uh, provisions for, were provided in the, in the budget bill that allows them to use it beyond the 12 month period, normally at the end of the fiscal year. So that, that's normally the logic that, that we do when we do the appropriations, that it's good for 12 months. If you don't spend it in 12 months, it reverts back to the fund source that was the appropriation came for, and then it goes from there. And, that, and that's right. what this conversion clause does. It just reverts all the unexpended, un, 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 unexpended unused monies back to the fund source that it came from. All right. Uh, did you have a closing century so we can wrap yeah. this up and move along? Yeah, this please? Mr. Chair, that this is something that GVB discussed with us. It's uh, it's the only way for the the appropriation you gave them in Section Four under the GVB section to work. Otherwise, they really will are they may not get anything that you seem we're seeming to promise them from this eighty percent. So, in order for them to get that, these two have to go together. Otherwise, they contradict each other. No, uh, but and, and is, was, was that your closing? Was yes, your closing? I know. and they and of course, their budget is six million at this point. So, we're trying to give them that other funding, the excess funding. If we if we take this provision out, they get a better chance of getting that eighty percent from FY twenty one only. So, there's no harm to FY twenty two. It doesn't impact FY twenty two at all. It would be consistent with what our goal was on the GVB section and allow them money for the operations and for marketing and all their other purposes. So that's right. why we're making this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Joe, let's, let, let's, let's take the roll call. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And the amendment proffered by Senator Tuis Lahi for page 141, lines 14 through 17. Chairman St. Augustine. Um, reservations, no. Chairman St. Augustine, nay. Vice Chair Rigel. Nay. Vice Chair Rigel, nay. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munyo Barnes. Again. Speaker Munyo Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Nay. Senator Lee, nay. Senator Teresa Lahi. Again. Senator Therese Talahi, aye. Senator Peter Talahi. Okay. Senator Peter Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titano. Okay. Senator Marsh Titano, aye. Senator Castro. Okay. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moreland. Aye. Senator Moreland, aye. Senator Munya. Okay. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Okay. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Perez. Again. Senator Perez, aye. Senator Torres. Nay. Senator Torres, nay. Senator Taitigui. Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 11 ayes and four nays. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, the motion passes. Moving along one on page 141, I'm looking at any other um, amendments and I don't see anything. We're 141, we're on page 142 now, folks. My colleagues, uh, Mr. Moylan, Senator Moylan, I think you're, you're on the... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yes. Uh, the amendment reads uh, for page 142, line five, uh, Basically, it's just the percentage. Instead of 30%, we're changing it to 15, back to 15%. Rather, just gonna save some time instead of reading the whole thing. I just changed the percentage from 30 to 15 and a quick explanation. Uh, what we're doing is reducing the governor's transfer authority. Okay, so this bill provides an unprecedented 30% transfer authority for the gov governor of Guam. It, it really does, that's what we're doing. And the legislature body has spent a good part of this last two and a half weeks, including this weekend, trying to find ways to assure that our key agencies get the needed funds to accomplish their mission. And yet, just like that, we're gonna tell the governor that she has more authority 
than any previous governor just to pick away where she wants and hence these efforts of our colleagues in finding ways to get money for certain entities would have gone, would have been gone in just in a stroke of the pen. And, and this I can't support. You know, I don't agree with increasing the transfer authority and just allowing it to remain at 15% is, is best. Now, if there is an emergency, of course, if that occurs or the governor needs to transfer additional funds, then bring it back to the legislature. But I'm just not comfortable transferring more money from the agencies that we work so hard to fight for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, I'm looking for if there's any um, one that would like to speak to that. Looking for any hands, please. Nobody, no, Senator Teller, please. And then uh, Senator Kelly, did you wave your hand, ma'am? Okay, and then you follow Senator Teller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't know if this goes to Steve or if this goes to you, Mr. Chair, but um, in the past, 2020, it was 15%. I think, um, trying to remember what year was even down to 10% on the transfer authority. I do understand that uh, we are in difficult times right now and, and even more so when we even tried to get the uh, information on CARES Act funding, what was utilized for that CARES Act, we're still not sure. We're only told that only 25% of that CARES Act funding was spent. Where's the remaining? Certain questions like that, you know, it, it's hard for us to determine where the funding is gonna to go to um, when we're not getting a lot of information. You know, the responsibility of, of the legislature is to hold purse strings. I mean, there, don't get me wrong, you know, if the, if the governor needs something and has a plan that's, that's solid and agreed upon at least eight of us, then it moves forward. We have to provide that assistance. We need to work hand in hand. The administration, the legislature and judicial all work hand in hand. But sometimes that doesn't happen. So we need to find certain uh, situations that, that kind of keep that, hold that per string. So um, my question is why 30%, why the huge jump from 15 to 30? What's the logic behind that? So I guess Steve or, well, Mr. Chair is on the line, on the phone right now, but Steve, can you answer that question? Yes, yes, Senator um, Fadigui. In the development of the budget, we, we already knew that it was going to be a really, really difficult uh, fiscal year to, to even phantom, first of all, the revenues, second of all, the reduction of the revenues and the impact it would have on general operations. The deeming that, I mean, seeming that we reduce the overall um, revenues of the government one by $66 million. That in itself was was something that we need to take we needed to take into consideration to figure out how to keep this government afloat with with such a massive reduction in in revenues. So in in, in working with the with the administration, they 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 requested even a higher amount, and I told them I said you know what I, I'm willing to to budge in the 15 percent to give more flexibility to the governor simply because I mean. Despite the revenues that we, we were presenting here today, we still don't know what's going to happen in, in the next three months, six months, 12 months from now. It, things can get better, and I hope they do, but it can also get worse, terribly worse. And, and instead of coming back every single 30 days, 60 days, one quarter to ask you know, for assistance from the legislature, we put in these provisions as as a as a, as an avenue for for the administration for the government to work uh, within the realms that we're providing her. I mean, if it, if it gets worse, uh, we we may have to come back and give her fifty percent. We don't know. So thirty percent, I thought, was a reasonable number based on what we know today, and based what we and based on what we don't know today. And 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 that's how that's how that thirty percent was basically thought up. On, on our part. It was not the administration's request. It's what we recommended out of OIB because the administration request was very, very high. Thank you, Steve, for that. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, for being honest, but, you know, it, it just behooves me to think that we are, we're sitting here negotiating with the administration on how much transfer authority they give you a high number just so they can get another number. I don't think that's right. It's our responsibility. We have to have accountability. We provide that accountability. 
So my next, and I'm sure my colleagues like to speak on this too as well. So I'll be, I'll try and be short. I've been trying to be short all day, not speaking, you know, when needed, but this does touch a nerve. So Steve, of the 30% transfer authority, how much is that? It's, it's difficult. Uh, right now, Senator, I need, I need to go back because when we first started the budget, we, you know, we calculated based on the allocation. But now there's been changes. There's some there's some funds that are restricted. There's some funds that you don't include. Some funds that are excluded from the calculation of of utilizing that that thirty percent transfer. So if you can give me a little time, I can kind of figure what we have to date, what all the amendments that were made in the bill. I can come up with at least an estimate of how much that money that that amount will be based on the 30, that thirty percent. Okay. I, okay. I agree. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us would like to know what that amount would be. And if anything, your best guesstimate compared to last year at 15 percent, um, that might help be helpful too to do a comparison. So in FY 2020 uh, of this year, when the budget bill has been passed and we figure out the numbers and the allocations, um, can you do a comparative? What happened in this year versus now? What was what's going to happen uh, in 2021? So thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to, to reserve um, until it comes back with the uh, answer and uh, allow my colleagues to speak. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else would like to speak? Senator Kelly, yes. To do as Masi, Mr. Chair. And yeah, you know, I have to admit that this one um, made me pause and really spend a lot of time contemplating it. I too didn't understand where 30% came from other than it looks like it's doubling the flexibility. And so I was wondering about the logic behind it. And I, you know, I reached out to some people with uh, financial backgrounds to get their assessment. Should we keep it at 15%? Like, are, are, are we raising it by too much? I suggested, uh, what about 20%? What about 25%? Like, you know, and at least for the ones I talked to, they because next year is so unknown, they said anyways, their advice was to me, they they really only felt more comfortable with the, the 30%. And, you know, in continuing to think about this, I mean, we just don't know. We don't know what kind of failures um, the, the general fund revenues might have or TAF. I mean, we saw it almost stop on a dime. And so with that, that affects all of our agencies across the board, you know, whether they can meet their salary that time or their, you know, maybe their local, uh, excuse me, their federal matching fund commitments or, you know, just uh, being worried about that. And um, I, I did like the reasoning of the, the retiring speaker that I really want the legislature and the executive branch to be working together. We do have our separate roles. And you know, the, the other thing that came to my mind in that is, unfortunately, with the way that the Organic Act is written right now, we're, we're finding we're a little hamstrung to come in um, in a guaranteed way when we need to. And so, you know, I, I worry a little bit about that as well. I mean, I hope we figure out a way to to resolve that because Congress has to fix this for themselves and they need to fix it for us, too. Um, that it's a different it's a different landscape and and um, we can't drop everything uh, in a moment's notice and and go to the legislature necessarily um, and some of us may be in quarantine and then yeah we're just totally left out of the voting process so yeah I I, I absolutely get the points that were brought up um, I tried to think through as many of them as possible. And so I'm, I'm still thinking this through and I, I look forward to hearing if there are any other points being made up by the others um, to help me continue to, to deliberate on this. Sajuus um, uh Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Anybody else? I'm looking for if there's any hands out there. We have to move along folks. Uh, Senator Therese, please. Yes, I'm. I'm kind of interested to hear the numbers also from OFB as to what would constitute 30%, what would constitute 15%. And uh, I wouldn't normally agree to a 30% transfer authority and I would support this amendment. However, I want to know if 
um, either of those scenarios uh, gives the governor enough transfer authority to cover the shortfall of public health. And because we calculate that, you know, we started with 13 and then there was a million added. Uh, so maybe about 12 million in operations. And, and that's what we're counting on now. And even, uh, yeah, so if that, if there's any shortfall, we have no other funding source, it's going to really rely on transfers. And so I just, I'm going to pick 15 or 30, whichever's going to be able to cover that shortfall at public health, because we're going to have to rely on her to cover that shortfall at public health. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. And and if you if, if folks, if you just want to do the simple math, um, ten percent of seven hundred and seventy-five is seven, what seven million, seventy million, whatever that number is, may not come in and be able to help uh, public health. So if you allow her the increase, you allow the flexibility, then she can take a look across the board in the whole budget in her executive area, because she can't transfer from anybody else. It's all within whatever she she has control over. So so I, I just wanted to make sure that we're, we're doing the math while we're waiting for Steve to do the calculation. Because Steve, we're waiting for your calculation so you can give a rough number, rough mm -hmm. estimate of what that amount may be. So we can end this discussion and go to vote. Senator Lee, please. Sorry, Mr. Chair, if I could just clarify, you said 775, but I don't think that you take it from general fund available. I think you, or you take it from general fund available, which is 649 million, if if I'm correct. So it's not seven, it's not a percentage of 775, it's a percentage of 649. So that's even yeah. less. Yeah. Yes, and it keeps getting less as we put all the restriction. All right, and that's what Steve's trying to come up with, what the restrictions may be. It may be very little to the extent where nobody's really going to get any help. And if they're going to keep coming back to us, I don't know when we can allow that flexibility. Steve, are you almost ready with that? those numbers? Approximate number? Just so we can end the discussion with this one and we can move on. Okay, uh, first of all, yeah, just to highlight, Senator Lee is correct. It's not the total general fund that you pay the 30% on because you need to re you need to take out um, what is what you cannot include in calculating the 30%, uh, especially if it's uh, specific by law. What we got uh, for 2020, um, based on what we feel is the amounts that can be tapped, is about 45 million based on the 15%. And then for 2021, yeah, I, I, I'm still working on this number, Senator. Just give me, give me a moment here. I wanna, it's like I said, I wanna, I, I wanna get to a ballpark. I don't wanna get to something that's out of the ballpark here. And Steve, still on that same note, 2020 budget is higher than 2021 we're promoting or we're, we're reviewing, okay? So that pretty much gives you something you can guide yourself with. Does anybody else want to speak before Steve comes on so that we're, we're not going to continue on beyond after Steve gives a report back? We're going to go to the vote, I hope. If he could just also let us know that number. It sounds like he's using a number way below 649 and even below what I used was 185 based on general fund for executive branch agencies only. Yeah, so yeah. If it keeps getting less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just just remember, folks. In the in the law, in the budget bill, there are there are provisions that that are exempted from the governor's transfer. So you need to go back and take out all those exemptions. Not all, not everything in the general fund is going to be available for transfer. So that's the part that's the part we're trying to do now, and we got to go through every provisions to make sure that we capture it. 
So it's not just taking 775, it's not taking 649, it's not taking the one, whatever. We need to go to each one and figure out what is a subject and what is not. And that's that's what's taking a little time. We have an estimate, but uh, you know, let me, <laughs> I wanna make sure because I don't want, I wanna give you something at least that's, that's close. My, my so colleagues, we, I prefer we just move along. The numbers are not getting any bigger, okay? Mr. Chair, uh, this and, is and, a very, Mr. Chair, this is a very important information. Yes, it's, 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 it's very important, Before Senator Tello, but the number's not getting any lower. Senator Lee, do you have anything you want to say, ma'am? Getting lower. It's a pointed inquiry to the proffer of this amendment. Um, I know that OFB is going through the numbers and trying to look at all the different places in the budget bill where uh, the governor's transfer authority does not exist. So maybe the proffer of this amendment already, because he's the one that is contemplating this, maybe he already did the math and um, he could answer this question for us. Isn't OFB ready? I mean. Senator Jim, do you do you have a number that you contemplating that you anticipated that the governor would be using 30% or is that just a, an amendment that you thought sounded good? <laughs> oh, more than good, Mr. Chairman, but but the okay. uh, number, I guess, just like Steve, will constantly change based on what we've been doing for the past two, two and a half weeks. So if we already know, uh, we're all assuming that it won't even reach the amount we need. So why in the heck are we doing this? We have something called the CRER, which I tried to address before. And if we would have reduced that percentage from three to two, we would have came up and looked at this a lot sooner than trying to give the governor basically double her transfer authority because now we're gonna think it's too late and she has to jump in and do something. But what's, what makes us really think is that where she's gonna put the money? We've been, we gave GMH $10, $10 million and that never, never happened. And we had a overage of $31 million. Where did that go? So now, now we wanna tell the governor, hey, just double your, your transfer authority. And we already heard from Steve that they wanted even more transfer authority. So why even do a budget? Just give her all the money and she can put it where she wants. But this gives us the checks and balances. And, and Mr. Chair, let, let's, let's save our time. We can go back and forth. I think we already made our decision. We're already on page 142. We need to be done. Let, let's move forward and I call for the vote, please. All right, no, Senator Kelly, you already spoke. Senator Lee. Yeah, I just had yes, a you point still have the Senator, Senator Kelly, uh, all one. Senator Lee, you still have the floor. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So I want to thank the uh, proffer of this amendment for kind of answering the question. So this is just blindly reducing. There's no rhyme or reason behind uh, the 15% reduction. Just basically, it's a feeling that it may be too much, um, even though, you know, we have the oversight chair of health telling us that we want to be very cautious with this to make sure that public health in the middle of this pandemic has the resources that they need to be able to meet its mandates and keep our community safe. And we've, we already know that there are close to 12 million in the hole. So we wanna make sure that um, however you feel about this governor, that you know we give our agencies the opportunity to meet their mission mandates and to be able to have the resources to protect our community. And that is the bottom line, Mr. Chair, thank you. All right, thank you. Steve, do you have the numbers? If you don't have the numbers, the author of the of the amendment has, has, has requested to move for the vote. I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm not quite ready with the numbers, sir, and I don't want to give a number that I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with at this point. We really need to know the numbers, Mr. Chair, in order to vote on this. So is there a move then to, to pause on this so we can move forward to other amendments? I don't want to spend the next 30 minutes just deep waiting for information that you, you've asked on this part that we're going to take a while for the OFB to get. We Mr. need to move yes. forward. This is an OFB provision in the bill that changes it from yes. 15, which is in statute, to 30%. So That's correct. I think it's reasonable to expect this kind of information from OFB at this point. Yes, and as we moved through the bill, we kept putting all kinds of revision and restrictions. All right, so the numbers kept changing. This was not caused by OFB. The changes was caused by this body. The changes? All right. Not no, no, it was changed by this body, okay? Right. Steve, do you have something you can use? 
Do you have a, an approximate number, Steve, so we can move on? Mr. Chairman, right now we're calculating what I come, what we're using is about $65 million. So it would be 30% of $65 million, which equates to- No, 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 65 million is 30% of 2021 appropriation okay. that is subject to the governors. That is, that is our guesstimate at this point. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Senator Tello, that answers your question. Now, any other further statements other than that? Everybody's spoken. We will move to vote and you can close, Sir, Senator Jim. Uh, thank you, my colleagues. And thank you, Steve, for the additional numbers. Uh, again, I go back to our responsibility as, as senators. You know, it's, it's not that I don't trust the governor. The governor has a great responsibility, but more so, so do we. The, the blindness, I think, lies in what we would do by increasing the authority to 30%. We, we sat here for two and a half weeks detailing by voting where the money should go. We're doubling the governor's authority to transfer. And do we really think we had the authority to tell her where it should go? I don't say we don't trust her, but I, I say that we're gonna be like three blind mice, you know, trying to figure out where, where, where the money will be transferred. Remember our experience with Guam Memorial Hospital. When we begged and, and we fought and we mandated and we asked again and again and again, until this day, the hospital has not received the $10 million. So with that experience, I, I asked the colleagues to please consider this. They asked, they wanted more, and this was negotiated down to, to 30%. Keep it at 15, use the CE, CRER, and, and let's go for the vote. Let's do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Joe. Let's, let's I have a roll call. Let's go to the vote. I apologize, Mr. Chair, he stepped away. I'll go ahead and take roll call. Yes, please take roll call, please. Thank you. Um, Amendment proffered by Senator Moylan, line five, page 14, Chairman St. Augustine. Aye. No, no, correction, no. <laughs> Chairman St. Augustine, nay. Apologize. Chairman Rigel. Nay. Vice Chair Rigel. Vice Chair Rigel, nay. Vice Chair Shelton. Ahi. Vice Chair Shelton, nay. Speaker Barnes. Ahi. Speaker Barnes. Nay. Senator Lee. Ahi. Senator Lee, nay. Senator Terlahi. Again. Senator Therese Terlahi, nay. Senator Pito Terlahi. My vote was yes. Oh, I apologize. Aye. Senator Terlahi, aye. Senator Pito Terlahi. Nay. Senator Pito Terlani. Nay, nay. Thank you, sir. Senator um, Marsh Titano. Ahi. Senator Marsh Titano, nay. Senator Castro. Ungen. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Ungen. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Vice Speaker Nelson. To support the amendment, correct? To yes. drop it down to 15%? Yes. Okay, home game. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Paris. Again. Senator Paris, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres. Aye. Senator Taitigui? Again. Senator Taitigui, aye. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chairman St. Augustine, we received eight ayes and seven nays. All right, thank you, my colleagues. Uh, motion passes, it'll be engrossed in the bill. We'll now move, we're on page 142. I'm looking for any amendments, I don't see any. We are now on page 143. My colleagues, keep focused, 143. 
Clock is ticking on us, okay? 144. I don't see a hand. I don't see it. I don't, and I'm looking for the any amendments. We're on page 145. We're almost done, folks. We're now on page 146. Senator Therese, please. Yeah. 145, this, this is in the drive. It's to add a new subsection Q on page 145 to that list of revolving funds. So I would add the Chamorro Land Trust Commission Survey and Infrastructure Fund. And adding this on would allow uh, the Chamorro Land Trust to use this fund for surveying and putting an infrastructure to their properties as the money comes in. So they don't have to wait for us to uh, appropriate anything above the level we've already appropriated. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Um, I don't think we need any discussion. Any discussion, or does anybody have reason to discuss? It's to add the Tomorrowland Trust into the revolving fund. Do you need a closing, um, Senator Therese? Nope. No, but it's the Survey and Infrastructure Fund. Thank you. That's correct. Tomorrowland Trust Commission Survey and Infrastructure Infrastructure Fund. Okay. We'll move now to vote. Jo, uh, Joe or Mika, whichever one, please take the roll call and let's move to vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the amendment proffered by Senator Therese Jolahi. Chairman Sinogstein. Aye. Chairman Sinogstein, aye. Vice Chair Rigel. Aye. Vice Chair Rigel, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munoz Barnes. Again. Speaker Munoz Barnes, aye. Senator Lee. Again. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Therese Talahi. Again. Senator Therese Talahi, aye. Senator Pito Talahi. Again. Senator Pito Talahi, aye. Senator Mars Taitano. Again. Senator Mars Taitano, aye. Senator Castro. Again. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moreland, aye. Senator Munya. This is where the fire trucks came from. Again. They had the fire. Senator Munya, aye. Senator, <laughs> Senator Castro, thank you. Please mute your phone. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Paris. Again. Senator Paris, aye. Senator Torres. Yes. Senator Torres, aye. Senator Taitigui. Aye. Senator Taitigui, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 15 aye votes. All right, thank you, my colleagues. The motion passes. It'll be engrossed in the bill. We are now on page 146. I don't see any hands. We're, we're now on page 147. We're almost done, folks. Page 148. All right, we are now on page 149. All right, uh, there you go. Now I see hands. Senator Munya, please, and then Senator Teller will follow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if if OFB can just um, load it on, Joe can just load it onto the Zoom chat. Yes, ma'am, just a second. Thank you, Thank you sir. Do you want, you can go ahead and read it, unless it's very long that we're going to wait for everybody to read uh, it. It could be followed along. <laughs> but I'll read it. I'll begin. Thank you. Okay, so this is a, a, to add a new section 23 to chapter 13, administrative provisions, page 149, line 16. Section 23, funds available to Guam Cancer Trust Fund. A, all funds available to the Guam Cancer Trust Fund in fiscal year 2020 and prior fiscal years shall not lapse and are available to the Guam Cancer Trust Fund in fiscal year 2021. B, notwithstanding the provisions of 26603 E2B, all funds available to the Guam Cancer Trust Fund in fiscal year are not subject to the 75% allocation limitation imposed by said section and may be expended for the purposes provided therein. C, all funds of the Guam Cancer Trust Fund, including funds appropriated by this act 
inclusive, inclusive of those appropriated by chapter 11, section 12 are not subject to any transfer authority provided for in this act or any other provision of public law. D, the provision of 11 GCA chapter 26, article three, subsection 26603E, and excuse me, six are not waived. And I put notes in that amendment too, so you can review and see where the subsections are um, that you can read along with that. And basically, Mr. Chair, this amendment is pretty self-explanatory. It um, Number one, it allows the Guam Cancer Trust Fund to keep, keep its lapses. The funds we appropriated yesterday came from public law 35-36. We would not want them to lapse on the first day of fiscal year 2021. And number two, it exempts the funds from transfer authority. Number three, the Guam Cancer Trust Fund law allows them to spend only 75% and keep the rest in reserves. They need the money, not reserves in 2021. This amendment will exempt that so they can utilize 100% of that money. It makes clear, this number four, it makes clear that no person who misuses Guam Cancer Trust Funds will, will escape justice. And this also will hold the Guam Cancer Trust Fund people accountable for what the money is supposed to be used for. Um, Mr. Mr. Chair, this amendment just simply closes the loopholes that may cost the Guam Cancer Trust Fund their appropriation. Thank you, and I hope my colleagues can support it. All right, now, does anybody like to speak to this amendment? I'm looking for hands, I see no hands. Okay, we got hands. Um, Senator Therese and then Senator Sabina. Please, Senator Therese. Yes, I'm just trying to keep, make sure I read it correctly, Mr. Chair. So, um, you know, the 75% the limit was imposed because the law also provides that 25% of this, these are, you know, tobacco settlement funds that go to the Healthy Futures Fund. And so part of that in in different places throughout the government is supposed to be invested. And so in this law, the original law, 25% of that was supposed to be invested. So it was supposed to be a source of income also, not just, yeah, just, you know, principal. But um, it really hasn't worked out that way for this trust, but I am hope I, I am still optimistic that that it could work out and they should be investing it that way. Uh, my concern is not necessarily for this fiscal year allowing them to use more than the 75% if they haven't invested that other part of it. But um, there's also a provision that says no more than 10% shall be utilized for cancer education and outreach programs. Um, I don't agree that that be waived. And I am, um, unfortunately it's included as part of that one section that we're waiving, I think, because um, yeah, I just, I think it's important. Well, for me, I want to prioritize direct services to the patients and um, That's why I think that provision was put into law because they saw a lot of the money being spended on, you know, promotional material and, and other things. I remember in one session, one of the senators bringing those materials in, but, but it's, uh, yeah. And uh, we just want, I think the intention behind that 10% limitation was so that 90% of all these funds are going towards direct services, screening, early screening and those things that really are going to um, cut down the rates of cancer and assist these patients who, who are actively fighting cancer. That's my only concern. I, I wish we could um, maybe finesse it more. I, I'm just, uh, I guess, in a rush at this point. All but right. that, that's my concern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Senator Sabina, you have anything to comment? Yeah, just a very simple question uh, on the B part, or it's, it talks about uh, 
fiscal year? It doesn't specify the fiscal year or if that was uh, intentional. I guess that's a question for the proper the amendment. Actually, it's basically for the, the so, and, and I also would like to, if I can even address uh, Senator Terlahi's um, concern too, that maybe, Maybe if we, as a as a compromise, we can we can utilize this section here just for the amendment that we proffered and passed yesterday, meaning they can just utilize 100% of all of the uh, excess. And and if we can uh, maybe specify that, um, then that would work. That way, they get to use a full 100% of whatever uh, they accumulate with the excess funds. So I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I'm not sure. S Senator Perez, did that, did that address your concern? Uh, sorry, uh, my, my computer froze. Uh, I, would you mind repeating? I appreciate okay. that. Um, so I, this may address your concern as well, the way it would uh, also address Senator Terlahi's concern that the, the, the uh, not subject to the 75% would be what would be accumulated in the surplus or the excess funds for the amendment that we passed yesterday. So they get to utilize the full 100% of that. And, and not only that, Senator Mooney, you might wanna address that on letter A, it refers to FY 2021. So the, the following letters is a, applicable to FY 2021. Am I correct? Exactly, I yes. I think that's what you want to know, make sure they identify the fiscal year. Yes. Does that, does that answer your question, Senator Perez? Yes, yeah, thank you, Senator oh. Munoz. Okay, you're welcome. All right, does anybody else would like to speak on this? If not, we'll move to vote. Joe, let's do the roll call. Let's move on this one. This is a good one. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. On the amendment is offered by. Is it amended, though, Mr. Chair, as we spoke about? The amendment as amended? Which one are you referring to? That with, uh, no, I think, uh, Senator Mooney, I, um, I apologize. I didn't get you to close, but. Uh, was there an amendment uh, that was offered? I know that uh, centuries wanted to. No, what you, were, yeah. the part that you were reading, the chair about. It, it's it's on letter A on the amendment. It's, mm. It says all funds available to Guam County Trust Fund in FY 2020 and prior fiscal year shall not last and available to Guam County Trust Fund in FY 2021. Um, I, I'm I'm understanding that this only applies because this is a budget year of 2021. It's. It's not asking for 2022, it's only asking for this year. So that's my understanding of it. Unless you wanted anything specific to say that uh, everything is uh, applicable to 2021 when we're not discussing any other budget but 2021. So I, I'm just, I just need to know if you need any further clarification that Senator Sabina had asked uh, the fiscal year. And that's how I see it. It's for Guam Cancer Trust Fund in FY 2021. On letter A. We could put all funds available to the, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mr. Chair. If she wants to be specific, we could. I mean, it's, we could include FY 2021 in the, in the letter B section as well. Yes, yes. And, and if you could just put back that Section, that line that says, uh, however, no more than 10% of the available funds shall be utilized for cancer education and outreach programs. You want that added, that 10%? Because okay. Senator Mooney is asking basically for 100% right. to be used for the patients. So why would you want to add the 10% if she's asking for 100% availability for patients? Because otherwise, 100% of it might go towards education as opposed to cancer screening, cancer treatment, cancer drugs, cancer services. That, that's what the 10% does, yeah. And yeah, otherwise, if, yeah, I think. Senator Munia, if you can like to speak about that, please, and then we can close and explain that because I understood you want 100% for patients. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I mean, I'm, I'm open to that, 
I'm, I'm open to that amendment. Okay, well, you're going to have to write that in, please. And then we'll, if we want, we can come back to this. But we, we want to move forward. I just wanted to make sure that we we record what would we need to be, do. Would that be uh, an amendment that Senator Terlahi would have to make to my amendment? I can do that. I can do that, Mr. Chair. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And if you like, we could set this aside and go to Senator Tidegui's uh, amendment and then come back to this one real quick. Yes, we'll just continue on, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll secure that one page one forty nine for you, Senator okay. Munya. Um, and who was next on the, on the list? Uh, Joe Mason, I think it was uh, Senator Lee. Ma'am, you have something? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sorry, before we um, set that one aside, um, can I just ask one quick question of the proffer of this amendment? Um, sure. Just, yeah, to make sure I'm clear. So this amendment would allow the Guam Cancer Trust Fund to use these funds, one hundred percent of these funds for basically anything they wish. I know that uh, Senator um, Terlahi had brought up uh, wanting to kind of carve it out and, and have it go directly to, um, basically directly to direct service to the people who need it, direct service to cancer patients. Um, is that something that the proffer of this amendment is open to? Because we want to make sure that it's going directly to the people who need it and not to fund any other extra whatever. Uh, well, the intent of this, uh, Senator Lee, was instead of just 75% going to patient care and assistance, 100% of it was going to go to that specific purpose. That was the intent of that part, to waive the 75-25. But what Senator Terlahi is in, wants to include is 10% of that 100% is going to go to education uh, as well. So that's what she wanted to include. But my intent really was to, instead of just limiting the, the, uh, the funds to 75%, to include the entire amount. That was my intent. Not for them to just utilize it for whatever they want, basically for, the, uh, for, for patient care. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator Lee. So, for my colleagues, we're going to set this aside. We're going to move to the other amend the other amendment to be proffered, so that we can come back to it real quick, please. S Senator uh, Tello, Tello, I think you got an amendment. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you, my colleagues. I've already placed the uh, amendment. It's on the. Um, let me pull it up too. Oh, where'd it go? So, Joe, can you make sure it's, it's posted on the Zoom, please? Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I place it on the uh, um, amendment or I mean, my amendment up there already. If you see it, it says TT. Um, yeah. All right. You find it? Okay. There, okay. there you go. Let's go. So, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, this is an amendment on uh, page 149, line 12. And uh, it's an amendment to section 22 of chapter, but, oh wait, this is the wrong. Okay, no, it's the right one. Chapter eight of the bill to read, uh, section 22, Imagahagan Guahan prohibited from expending excess fiscal year 2020 and fiscal year 21 revenues. Notwithstanding any provisions of law or rule or regulation, Imagahagan Guahan shall not expend general fund revenues collected in excess of the adopted revenue as the basis for the appropriations contained in public law 35-36 and this act without a legislative appropriation authorizing the expenditure of such funds. That's my amendment and I, um, I hope everybody has that. Um, any hands that don't have it, I'll be happy to uh, send it to you personally if I could move forward with this and the reason why that we put this amendment together. So Mr. Chair, my amendment proposes to ensure that any unappropriate excess revenues that may be realized in FY 2021, um, as well as 2020 will not be uh, spent unless an appropriation is authorized by this legislature. The amendment proffered is to make clear that all unappropriated excess funds need to be specifically appropriated by the legislature before being spent by the administration and for whatever purposes. This language removes any ambiguity, 
surrounding how and when excess funds should be spent and allows the legislature to maintain and uphold its inherent authority to appropriate. Although we learned just yesterday through the OPA's audit and FY20, uh, FY19 uh, financials, the government of Guam ended that financial year with a surplus of $35.6 million, which reduced the cumulative general fund deficit from 83.4 million to 47.8 million. This legislature and the people of Guam had to wait almost two full months after the audit should have been released sooner, according, but we just got it recently. So if the audit was completed and published in a timely manner, senators, we would have received that information well before we started this bus budget session. This amendment is consistent with legal guidance I received on this topic which argues that the governor's use of unappropriated excess revenues for any purpose without legislative appropriation would strip the legislature of its organic act authority to appropriate funds. So I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, ensuring the legislative branch and the executive branch respect each other's organic act responsibilities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Tidegui. Anyone on this amendment? Senator Lee, you're recognized. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Chair. And I wanna thank the proffer of this amendment. I think the intent is very, very good. Um, we, we do need certain information to be able to move forward and be able to cobble together a budget that makes sense. So I can appreciate some of the points that were raised, um, but if I could just ask a question to the proffer of the amendment, Mr. Chair, um, I believe that there is case law that solidifies that the governor's authority to use unappropriated excess revenue um, for tax refunds. Um, so when we say that this amendment protects excess funds um, and I'll quote, for whatever purpose, um, is the proffer of this amendment asserting that this amendment would prohibit the governor from using this money on tax refunds? Senator Tideway. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for that question. Um, and, and thank you for understanding the, the jobs that we hold as well as administration. But what it does is there's money that's been appropriated every year for tax refunds. Um, and it was brought to our attention by um, Mr. Byrne that the EITC funding on reimbursement also assists in into paying out tax refunds. Um, so, you know, it, if in the event that there is an additional funding needed for tax refunds, then it's as simple as, you know, what the governor does and just go ahead and spend, spend it, but you would have to come to us to seek uh, extra funding for tax refunds. But the law basically says any excess revenue goes into a rainy day fund. If you look at the, the current law on, on funding, and then in that, in that rainy day fund, it's specific on how much funding, I mean, where and not tax refunds. So it's kind of odd that, you know, Mr. Byrne was telling us that, um, well, I thought you guys wanted us to pay the tax refunds. So, absolutely, but to do it correctly. So um, does she have the authority, I guess, to, she uses their Section 30 money, like I mentioned, and she also uses EITC, the reimbursements. And uh, that's, sorry, that's not what I know. To interrupt you, but I think you mean, ACTC, not ATC, EIC. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and yes, ATC. Yeah. Thank you for A that question. Yeah. So I don't know if you would like to answer this question, or if OFB could give us um, a little bit more information. But when when is a fund determined to be in excess, at, in accordance with um, government accounting, or maybe the rules by by GASB? 
Normally at the end of the fiscal year, Senator, um, you know, um, financial reports are done, but these are unaudited, they're unofficial financial reports. They're just reports just to indicate what the balances are at a specific time. In this case, normally at the end of the fiscal year, it'll show you a September um, 30th run date. But uh, again, officially, that those balances are not made official until the audit is completed. Right. So for informational purposes, you use it. For planning purposes, you can use it. But you cannot uh, basically just make a definite say that, you know, that that's the amount until it's actually certified and verified in the audit. And I just wanted to confirm with you, Steve, that tax refunds are not appropriated. They're just set aside. Is that correct? We take off the amount that we estimate for these tax refunds off the top of the gen on the general fund in the beginning that's of the, the fiscal year. Yes. Right, that's the 125 million, right? Yes. Yes. And they, they can they they can pay the refunds with or without legislative authority, correct? Um, that part, I, I think it would still be a requirement through appropriations to pay to pay for the tax refunds because it is tapping into the into the revenues of the government. And and from my knowledge, all revenues generated at least out of the general fund is supposed to be appropriated. And that's the reason why we set the 125 aside. Yeah, we just set it aside just to make sure that we 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 budget and allocate for that. Yes, you're correct. But it is part of the, it is part of the budget bill, so it is basically appropriated because it is part of the revenue base. Okay, thank you very much, Steve. You're and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Leach. Anyone else on the amendment? Anyone else on the amendment? Senator Terlaghi. Thanks. If I could just ask OFB. So this um, language was not in last year's budget bill. So I just wanted to know what you intended it, how, how you intended it to act. You're authorizing her to utilize excess revenues. Um, for what purpose and and um, just in your previous answer, yeah, you said th these would not be realized until after the end of fiscal year. Do you think they are using excess revenues throughout the fiscal year? Oh, um, that, that Senator, I, 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 I cannot comment on that. I, I don't know. I would like to think that what revenues they're using it's revenues that have been appropriated accordingly and uh, um, any other excess revenues uh, I, I don't think um, I, I I don't know I, I can't answer that question I don't have any information on that one. all right so what was your, your intention in this bill or mr. chair yeah it, I mean with this section yeah. this is Again, a new, new type of yeah. language or yeah again again I, you know working with 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 the administration on this early on uh, and considering all all you know the situation at hand the difficulties the unknowns etc cetera, etc cetera, we were just trying to figure out ways how to provide at least the administration some some method of 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 uh, you know trying to, to fund these agencies, trying to meet the mandates, trying to help agencies out there, uh, you know, meet its goals and missions. And, and this was one of the things that the administration asked. And I, I didn't see any problem doing it. Um, there are still restrictions on this. And, uh, and like I said, uh, you know, it's, it's, the same, it's the same situation like this year. If they utilize these funds, I would think with the intended per good intended purpose, then you know it, it's it's it'll help the government. And uh, from whatever from what I hear about the excess of how they use the 2019 paying down the deficit, I, I think that 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 was a good thing. 
So that was the intent of, of this provision, Senator. But do you think they used excess revenues in FY20? Because oh. this, this is telling them to use excess revenues above the FY21 projection in FY21. Well, right now, right now, if you look at the CRER report, it does it, it does say that we are tracking higher than our, our, our deep projected amount. But then again, you know, we got uh, at least both of two more months in the report. And, and the way things have been for the last week, two weeks, it's definitely going to be, there's going to be a change. So I don't know if that excess is going to be there at the end of the fiscal year. Whether or not they're using that money right now, I, 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 I couldn't say. Okay, well, uh, maybe, let me rephrase then. If they asked you for this provision to authorize them to use an FY21 excess revenues, it sounds to me like they're admitting that they can use excess 21 revenues in FY21, just like we asked them to do for the hospital $10 million and that there's no reason for them to say they have to wait for an audit and or whatever, whatever. Uh, we know we will have deficit FY19, FY20, and part of our deficit is tax refunds. You know, for right now, we, we have a tax refund deficit for sure. And um, yeah, I just think that that's very ironic of them saying it very nicely to say, you know, please put this language in and allow us to use excess funds this year when, when that's exactly what we've been asking them to do for, you know, critical, repair and critical needs. Um, I would, I think that's of course what we are going to need to do is to allow them to use excess funds, but I support the amendment that requires them to tell us there are excess funds and that they are going to spend it. I do not agree with the do whatever you want mentality because, and this is because, when we asked them, where did you get the war claims money? They refused to tell us what source that was from, except, oh, that's from the general fund. Well, was that excess revenue in the general fund? Was that money appropriated for another agency in the general fund? Was that the 10 million that was supposed to go to the hospital? Excess revenue from 2019? I mean, that I want to know. And so I just think it's, we cannot as a legislature do our job if we're not going to ask for some kind of accountability. And I think it's behoove. It behooves us to act quickly if they say, okay, look, things are looking good. And, and of course, they're going to have to convince us just like, so that, that argument should wipe out this provision. And if you're not going to wipe it out, then demand some kind of accountability. Or we as a legislature are not doing any type of check and balance. And that's, it's, it's all about priorities. That's our real, real role. And um, if we want to prioritize tax refunds, which is what I want to do, then I think holding them accountable as this um, amendment is trying to do. And if as long as we as we commit to acting quickly, there's no problem with that. We've seen the speaker call us in on two hours notice. So there is no reason that we cannot act together but to allow only one party to act and the rest of us to sit here in the dark while the people of Guam are being told there's no money for this, there's no money for that, there's no money for public health to operate, let alone to you know, deal with the pandemic. I, I will not do that. I want to see, you know, uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander and it should be good for the people of Guam. That's what we should, that's what we really need. And, so I just let's just be logical here. You can't use that argument at one point and then say let, but let's let the governor do it. What we're we're restricting ourselves from doing, we're going to allow the governor to do with without having to tell us where any of this money comes from or or really how reliable of a resource that is. And that's all I'm asking. No one is trying to tie her hands. We understand what we are facing, but that's how we build trust. You just open it up. Bring everybody along, show them this is reliable and, you know, convince us. They should be here to convince us why this is such a great provision that they asked you to put it in. Because I would very much like to ask them then where's the $10 million for that hospital and why in the world can we do this for public health? Straight off the bat. 
because that's the amendment that I made that was voted down. So thank you. Mr. Chair, I don't know who I'm talking to here. Are you here? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Senator Talahi. Anyone else on the amendment? Senator Jim. Senator Moylan, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I feel this amendment is, is simple. And if there are excess revenues, which I'm not really optimistic that they are, then, then it should be the legislature and not the governor who, who will decide how these monies will be expended. And as the last speaker uh, eloquently said, you know, we've been asking DOA, we've been asking BBMR for this. And basically, uh, as spokespeople, spokespersons for the governor, they said, we have no say, the legislature has no say, and it's up to us, meaning Adelou. To that, I, I just got two things to say. We are the checks and balances, and if we're not going to be the checks and balances, then it's then it's about time then, I guess, that this legislature just needs to be part-time and we need to get the hearing, public hearing moving on that. So because this is exactly where we're heading. So I support this amendment because it's the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Moylan. Anyone else on the amendment? Anyone else on the amendment? Chairman St. Augustine is back. Chairman St. Augustine. Yep, I, I have no comment. Uh, if there's nobody to speak, uh, Joe, let's go to the vote. Mr. Oh, Chair, Senator Tello, you want to close? Please go ahead and close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to thank those who spoke on the amendment and, and brought up some really, really good points. You know, this is not just about my amendment. This is all our amendments. This is something that we should all come together and demand because we do hold the purse strings and we do have accountability responsibilities to the people of Guam. It's our responsibility. We have every opportunity too when there's excess revenue to pay tax refunds. We've been asking the administration to pay the tax refunds, you know, how far are they in? And we're, we're getting these reports so far, so late in the game before we realize it, it hasn't been paid out. And now when we're, it's only when we're screaming. Well, now this legislature has the opportunity to pay those tax refunds out. We can follow and find out how many are how many need to be paid out or who are up and who, who meet the criteria to pay out. And we can do that as a legislature. And then maybe the governor would be happy about that because then maybe we'll stop complaining because we can utilize this excess revenue to pay tax refunds. And I bet you tend to one on top of public health, that's, that's right up there, neck to neck. And again, you know, I, I ask the senators to, to just think back this last year or even in 2018, trying to get information from the administration. They weren't giving it to us. We still haven't had a lot of our questions an answered like Senator Therese had mentioned. This amendment is our amendment. It's not my amendment, it's our amendment. It's what the people expect us to be and that's to be accountable. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Joe, let's take the roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and the amendment uh, proffered by Senator Taitsugui. Chairman Sonogstein. Pass. Chairman Sonogstein, pass. Vice Chair Rajal. Aye. Vice Chair Rajal, aye. Vice Chair Shelton. Again. Vice Chair Shelton, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Pass. Speaker Munya Barnes, pass. Senator Lee. Again. Senator Lee, aye. Senator Therese Talahi. Again. Senator Therese Talahi, aye. Senator Pito Talahi. Again. Senator Pito Talahi, aye. Senator Marsh Titan. Again. Senator Marsh Titan. Aye. Senator Castro. Yeah. Senator Castro, aye. Senator Moylan. Aye. Senator Moylan, aye. Senator Munya. Again. Senator Munya, aye. Vice Speaker Nelson. Again. Vice Speaker Nelson, aye. Senator Paris. Again. Senator Paris, aye. Senator Torres. No. Senator Torres, nay. 
Similar type of meal. Okay. Similar type to we uh Chairman St. Augustine. Aye. Chairman St. Augustine, aye. Speaker Munya Barnes. Okay. Speaker Munya Barnes, aye. Mr. Chair, the amendment received 14 ayes and one nay. Thank you, my colleagues. The motion passes. Uh, we will, we're on page 149. I'd like to ask for a, a, a five minute recess. All right, uh, folks, um, and for the people of Guam, please be patient. We will be back real quick. <laughs> 